spectacular Saturday afternoon in DeKalb as Northern Illinois has their home opener. The Sycamores of Indiana State will provide the opposition. Oh, and I say a spectacular day. How about this? 79 degrees, low humidity, no wind, basically clear skies. We are ready for football. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom Dore. David Kaplan, Bob Camell alongside. And guys, absolutely great day. Big day for college football. Campy, Northern looking for a good season. Right, Northern Illinois off to an 0-2 start, but they look at that Minnesota game and say, wow, we let them wriggle off the hook. And the Western Michigan loss. They worked very hard on running the football. They did have an injury to Chandler Harnish, a quarterback. So these two guys will both see opportunities today. Demarcus Grady and Dan Nicholson, the senior. He'll probably get the first shot. But the real key to what they do, this guy right here, Miko Brown. You want to talk about balance? Watch this. He gets drilled, and nope, not going to go down. Going to find Paydirt. If he can run the ball effectively, the O-line plays well today. Northern Illinois is going to be one and two. Well, we'll see if they're able to do that. And Bob Kamel, Indiana State, a program that's been struggling, looking for a little respectability right now. Well, I don't think there's any question. The offensive output for the Sycamores has been somewhat anemic. However, Darius Gates, 5'9", 180-pound running back. He is the man that makes this offense go. He's had 65 all-purpose yards in both contests. From the defensive side of the football, we have a young guy named Alex Sewell. Every defense has a heart. He's a free safety with 13 tackles. He makes this defense go. It is a beautiful day. We're looking for a great football game. Northern Illinois looking for a win at home. Stick around. Starting lineups are coming up next. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. Get reacquainted with an old friend. Eduardo's Mexican Restaurant in downtown DeKalb. Our simple but elegant dining room has been completely remodeled, including commissioned artwork by renowned Chicago artist Oscar Romero. But our great food hasn't changed. We still have the best selection of authentic Mexican dishes, including seasonal specials, all expertly prepared using only the finest and freshest ingredients, and served steaming hot to your table. Eduardo's Mexican Restaurant, downtown DeKalb. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. U.S. Cellular Bears post game live after every game with former Bears Dan Jiggets, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller. We'll bring you the Bears press conferences, and William Jackson is live outside the Bears locker room with player reaction. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Thanks, best friend. Are you ready for a good shopping experience? Hi, I'm Mike Abt with Abt Electronics and Appliances. Since 1936, our goal has been our customers' complete satisfaction. Whether you're replacing a TV or a refrigerator, building a dream kitchen or a home theater, our knowledgeable staff can assist you. Visit our website at abt.com to get one-year financing plus free shipping. Apt, pleasing people since 1936. This broadcast of Northern Illinois Husky football is brought to you by Fanny's Pub and Grill, the official tailgate home of NIU Athletics. Village Commons Bookstore, for all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit bcbs.com. Applebee's, try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's a convenience store and a whole lot more. Plains Farm and Fleet. I found it at Farm and Fleet. Jewel, we take one stop shopping to the next level. TCF Bank, open seven days. The University Plaza, it's where to live. The NIU MBA program, take the NIU MBA challenge. Kishwaukee Hospital, health, heart, home. And Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. 
Stadium. I'm Jim Blaney along with head coach Jerry Kill. Jerry, the question everybody wants to know, who starts a quarterback today? Well, Dan Nicholson has started, and, and we'll play DeMarcus Grady also. But uh, uh, Dan will get the start, and, uh, and I'm looking forward to watching him play. How will the situation develop? Will you, do you have a set rotation, or is it by feel? By, by feel and what we're doing offensively. Coach, thanks for your time, and good luck today. Thank you very much. All right, Tom, back to you. And we have a moment of silence. Time right now for our Resource Bank keys to the game. Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. Campy for Northern Illinois, what do you see as a key to the game? Well, they've got to run the football, Tommy. This is uh, something essential that they've got to be able to do. The offensive line's got to step up, and Larry English has to earn an A today. And he can do that. Bob Kamel for Indiana State. What do you think? Well, Indiana State being on the road, they're a serious underdog in this game. They have to keep their poise. They have to get out to a good start, no turnovers, take care of the football game, win the kicking game, win the kicking game. Field position will be Thank critical. You. They have to make Northern Illinois play on a long, long field. Just had a moment of silence here at Northern Illinois. A horrible tragedy last year. All right, but we are ready for football, guys, and ready for what hopefully is going to be a very entertaining football game. Northern looking, obviously, for uh, a little success. And in Cap, as you said, one of the big keys is running that football and getting that running game established because that opens everything else up. Well, I was talking with P.J. Fleck, who was a great player, All-American here at Northern Illinois and played in the National Football League and now is an assistant coach. And he said, we spent the bye week in his position, his wide receivers, he said, we didn't work as much on catching the football as we did blocking. He said, and if my guys could do what they did in practice, we should have some success in the running game because I'm stressing to my guys, I know it's called wide receiver, but you got to block first <laughs> to get everything else opened up. And, Bob, that's one of the things, obviously, as a, as a coach that you look at is everybody doing what they're supposed to do, whether it's block on this play or catch the football or whatever. It's On those bye weeks, so often those coaches say, we're going back, we're doing a fundamental week, we're just going to concentrate on blocking, tackling, doing the things we need to do. Well, you know, from a coaching standpoint, you have to work on those things every day. But when you have a bye week, you have an opportunity to work on them in a more significant fashion. And like anything in football, you achieve what you emphasize. The NIU MBA program open kickoff. Take the NIU MBA challenge. The NIU MBA program, a proud sponsor of NIU Athletics. Ready for the kickoff and... Back deep to receive for the Huskies. You got Miko Brown and John Kramer. Two guys that bring pretty good wheels. And it is going to be Brown that'll pick it up. He's across the 15 to the 20, looking for a block. Gets out close to the 30 where he's taken down. Jaden Everett there with the stop. So Northern has it first and 10 and... Uh, we heard Dan Nicholson going to be the starting quarterback from Jerry Kill, the head coach. Nicholson, a little bit more of a thrower. Demarcus Grady, the guy that's going to uh, be a little bit more of a running quarterback. Applebee's starting lineups. Applebee's try Applebee's. Car side to go. You call it. We bring it out. This young Nicholson from Brother Rice High School in Chicago in the, in the story Catholic League. Young guy had soldier, uh, shoulder surgery. Did not participate in spring drills. Montel Clanton's going to be the single back here, guys, so he'll get the first carry. They'll go with the veterans getting the first shot. They give it to him. He'll get a couple yards off the right side. And here are Applebee's offensive starters. Nicholson, obviously, the quarterback. Miko Brown will be in there. Sharp. Palmer Simon, the wide receivers, Reed Cunningham at three catches. And the big guys in the middle. Eddie Amansky, the uh, big fella for the center, and Dan Nicholson, the quarterback. Well, Adamski, it, guys, is a very mobile center. Big boy, but he can get out and pull from his center spot, which is uh, unusual to have that kind of quickness. Goes right up the middle, and very close to a first down. He will have a first down. Everett with the stop, and our Applebee's defensive starters now. Mallington, Goodrich, Gefford, and Kevin Wilson along the front line. Quinton Scott, the guy in the middle, looking to make some stops today. And in the backfield, Darius Middlebrooks, Kyle Monroe. Get after the Huskies if they can. Bobby, what do you say? It's just get a hat on a hat and say, you know what? You're in our house now. We're going to teach you something. Excellent. Excellent philosophy for the beginning of this football game. Then open up a little bit later. Make sure you can knock them off the football. 
And that so far is exactly what they're doing. Good spin move gets across the 45 out to about the 46 yard line. Alex Seawall on the stop. You know, if you look at this Northern Illinois offensive line right across the board, you've got 6'6", 290, 6'7", 315, 280, 6'6", 295, 6'6", 300 pounds. In the not-too-distant past, Cappy, I'd be looking at Tommy for an offensive lineman that was about 200, 235 pounds. And now, I mean, these are big kids, big kids. You know, they really match up well against the Sycamore's uh, defensive front, especially at, at, with, at linebacker depth. Marcus Perez, the senior wide receiver, lined up on the right side. Let's see if Dan Nicholson looks there. Perez had a great week last week. Nope, instead going left side. There's some of that blocking that Cap was talking about, and that's enough for a first down. Well, you had a couple wide receivers out there making a play. Now watch the, what you'll see here. Really nice job by the wide receiver cores. Cox and Palmer are going to be out here and make a block. Both guys get up in the wash. Well, you know, here it is. Watch this. Just get a hat on a hat. Like you said, David, you don't have to knock him down. Just get in front of him and let the, let the ball carrier make the little cut. You block him to the outside, he takes him to the inside. You work on things like that. And if you want to be a complete wide receiver, you have to be able to block. Nicholson back in the shotgun. Rolls out to the right side, throws. The pass is caught across the 40, and he stopped right there. Kyle Monroe Boy, with the stop. If you watch that play, didn't it look like he had all day? If he gives a little pump fake, he could have gone around the right side and run all day. I don't think anybody was thinking that Dan Nicholson would ever tuck and go. Well, one of the things with a quarterback coming off of a shoulder surgery, he has to get into a game, a game situation. He has to know that he has the ability to throw the football. He has to build on that confidence. A couple of little passes, dink passes here and there, and then start to move the ball down the field with the passing game. Second about four, motion man comes to the middle, goes right back. Handoff's going to go to that left side and just grinding ahead, looking for some running room. Gets across the 35 to about the 33-yard line. That's enough for another first down for the Huskies. Well, you talk about outstanding second effort. Watch this. Hand it off, and Clanton bounces, takes the hit, keeps the feet moving, and moves the chains. Real nice job. Any running back, if you keep your feet moving, your legs moving, you give yourself a chance. When those legs stop, it is over. Credit Kyle Scarb, number 34, the fullback, with an excellent block on a linebacker. With I love to watch fullback play. Nicholson again in the shotgun, calls out the play. Handoff goes straight ahead, coming around the right side, and he'll get a couple. That's Clanton again. Not a lot of room there. Pretty good read by the Indiana State defense. That'll bring up second and eight. You know, one of the things, one of the things you stay play side, you stay with the play, you stay with the play when it when it, it really gets where you can't go any, that's when you bounce the outside. I thought he should have stuck a little bit longer with the play, in other words, to the area where the play was designated originally to go. Sometimes you have to be a little bit of patient. Look at that little seam, boom, and take it. Looked like motion on the offensive line. That's exactly what it's going to be. Dan Keller, the right guard, number 78. You got to understand one thing about 78. He was a defensive lineman for a while. He's not used to these snap counts. He wants to move. He wants to get going. A young, young guy, 6'6", 295, a senior from St. Catharines in Racine, Wisconsin. Uh, played a lot of defense, was a high school captain. Just a great young guy, according to the Northern Illinois coaches. Trips to the left side for Nicholson. Looks, another screen pass, goes to the left, and this one is a good one. It's across the 30, down inside the 25, very close to a Husky first down. Kyle Monroe there on the stop. This is wide open, guys. Well, what you see here is, you know, they set up one to get the other one going. We talked about the wide receivers in, in, in the blocking. Look at those two blocks right there. Stay with it. Go to the outside. Again, you achieve what you emphasize. Fleck uh, emphasized blocking with his guys during the week. It's paying off right now, David. Well, well, there's number 80, Landon Cox, and he gets up in the wash. And as you said, Bob, you don't have to absolutely light somebody up just getting away. Wasn't Landon Cox a famous high school basketball That's player? That's what I was going to ask you about. <laughs> Give going up the middle, looking for some room. Bounces off one man, and he keeps going. He's down near the 10-yard line. That's a first down. You talk about active legs. Watch his feet. 
When you evaluate a high school running back, you evaluate him from the ground up. He has to have good, quick feet. Watch the quick feet here. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba -ba. There he goes, jumps outside, feet keep going, shoulders square, becomes his own blocker. Well, take a look. Watch him how he bounces. We showed that in the open a week, two weeks ago. Look how he takes the hit. The feet, as you said, keep moving, and he takes a big hit at the end, pops right up and says, first down. Nico Brown, the freshman out of East St. Louis, is rolling after that carry. Looking for another one here. Motion comes to the right side. It is a give. Makes a move, and he gets hammered right away. Good stop on the play. Quinton Scott right there on the stop. Gain of maybe a yard. Make it second down and goal from the nine. Well, you know, the Sycamores play with some under, what we refer to as undersized uh, linebackers. Quinton Scott, 5'10", 195-pound junior, but he hops around. He's not going to take a guard on. He's probably not going to take a fullback on, but he's going to beat you with speed. Also on that play, number 20, Darius Mid uh, Middlebrooks, that strong safety comes up and makes a very nice tackle also to assist. Well, for Indiana State, this would be a huge shot in the arm if they hold him to a field goal try. Looking corner of the happen. end zone, touchdown. Caught it right in the right corner. Cunningham, the tight end with the catch. Touchdown, Huskies. Great throw, real nice separation by the receiver. And I was just saying, but for Indiana State, it'd be a shot in the arm if you can hold. Not going to happen. Now watch, you get real nice job here. Nicholson's going to sell it, going to step up, and he's got all day. Just find your guy, get your foot down. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. On that play, you talk about a freshman running back, okay? At a Moss Point, Mississippi young guy came up here. I'm telling you something, Miko Brown, outstanding block, outstanding block. And a lot of young uh, running backs are not interested in putting their nose in there, and he did. Mike Salerno now, six of six on extra points. The touchdown pass, the block that you talked about, and little look into the corner, six for Northern. Here's something to celebrate. A new Applebee's neighborhood value. Endless favorites starting at $9.99. Choose from sweet and meaty riblets, panko crusted shrimp, or golden delicious chicken tenders. Your choice, all you can eat, starting at $9.99. Be ashamed not to have a cold beer with that. It's an all you can eat dinner, but you gotta hurry. Endless riblets, shrimp, or chicken tenders starting at $9.99. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. BCB is the official site for NIU athletics, featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll free 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.bcbs.com. Huskies with the lead after their first possession. They put seven on the board, 7 nothing with 8.33 left here in the first. And our drive summary brought to you by the University Plaza Drive Summary. That's where to live. 11 plays, 70 yards, took about six and a half minutes. Nicholson got, by the way, guys, four of four, 38 yards on the TD pass. How do you keep the guy you're competing with off the field? Play like that, go four or four and lead yeah. your team to a touchdown. Yeah. Well, I think he's answering a lot of questions for himself, about himself, but he's also answering a lot of questions about himself for the coaching staff. That arm looks really good to me. Hats off to the training group and the, the orthopedic people here. Kickoff, drives over to the left side. He'll take it about the six yard line, makes a move, trying to get away, trying to turn that corner and can't do it. He stopped right at the 15-yard line. Patrick George there to make the stop, and that's where they'll put it in play. First down, Kyle Monroe on the return. Yeah, Kyle Monroe caught it. I think he thought, I can get to the outside and turn that corner. Not going to happen. One of the things on that kickoff, and I'm sure the special teams coaches from Northern Illinois will get the guys on the side and talk to them a little bit. They were, they were a bit bunched up. You have to, have to hit those landmarks. You have to spread yourself equidistant across the field before you converge on the ball carrier. You need to spread it out just a little bit more. It was a little seam. Equidistant? Had, equidistant. <laughs> Don't wow, forget, I went, went hey, to a big time college. I went to Fenwick. He Kaplan, looked it up. Kaplan. I went to Fenwick. I'm a Fenwick graduate. Chuck Dottle, their quarterback, fades back, looking to throw in the first play, sets up a screen. It's complete. He's across the 20, out to about the 25 yard line, and that will be enough for an ISU first down. 
Applebee's starting lineup. Applebee's. Try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in. We bring it out. Gates the running back with Brock Lowe there, the fullback. And uh, this is a team that's going to look to make things happen. They're struggling offensively. Only three points so far this season. Fakes the give. Now he's going to keep it. Comes across the left side, and he stopped right there. Tim McCarthy on the stop. Larry English, the big fella, got a broken thumb. They did a little surgery this week, but said he's okay. He played last week with that broken thumb. He broke it in the Minnesota game. Tim McCarthy just made that stop, middle linebacker and defensive backs. Yeah, Bob and I were here last year when he injured his knee, and I mean, Larry English is the best player on the defense. Tim McCarthy is one of those heart and soul type guys that you've got to have. But English on everybody's Nagurski Award watch list. Pass goes to the left side. It's complete for a few. Ryan Patrick with the catch. We'll see where they mark forward progress. Looks like he's going to be just shy. Ball is down at about the 35. He's got a little over a yard to go for the first down. Bill Diedrich, the offensive coordinator for the Sycamores, I think is, is mixing it up early on in the game. I really like his first call, that screen pass, to give the Sycamores just a little bit of breathing room. Bill Diedrich's been around, the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame, offensive coordinator in the Canadian Football League. Impressive resume. Trent Miles was lucky to get it. Third down and a yard. Let's see if they keep this on the ground. They do looking, and I don't think they got it. No Great chance. stop by the NIU front. Larry English, among others, right there on that stop. Well, that's watch the push. This is what an All-American does. An All-American steps up, gets his nose in there, and makes a play. And that is Larry English completely blowing up the offensive line. What, what he has to do, what he's being schooled to do, is to be cut, block the blocker, change the line of scrimmage, make the line of scrimmage at heels depth of the offensive lineman, and then let the linebackers pursue. Larry English is not one of the better football players, not only in this game, but in the entire conference and in the entire country, as you mentioned before on the Bronco Nagurski watch list. Yeah, there's NFL guys that are out every week to watch this guy. And, that's and it is fun. blocked right up the middle. NIU had all kinds of penetration, and the Huskies will have it right there. You know, I mentioned in my keys to the game for the Sycamores, had to be an impressive kicking game. Cannot give Northern Illinois this short of a field. The block and NIU looking to score. Imagine a place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. All season long, don't miss College Football Mania on Comcast Sportsnet as we bring you the top games from college football's most elite conferences. From the Pac-10, you'll see key matchups featuring high-ranked USC, Arizona State, and Oregon, and the always solid Big 12 conferences on display with Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas, paving their trail to a shot at a national title. Plus, Comcast Sportsnet brings you all the excitement of NIU football. It's College Football Mania all season long, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. You never know who's going to drop by Chicago Tribune Live. Jonathan Taves. It was incredible to spend the whole year in Chicago, um, especially, you know, watching the progress that our team made. Tommy Harris. I never thought about injury until I got hurt. Right. And, I, I, you know, you really respect it afterwards. Tom Arnold. If you hate a Cup fan, you're a bad person <laughs> because it's been 100 years. And weekly visits from Nick Swisher. See, I've got the CSN facing y'all, too. I got this thing locked in. Chicago Tribune Live, weeknights at 530 on Comcast Sportsnet. Welcome back, 7-0 Northern Illinois, their second blocked punt of the year. Other one came against Minnesota, Willie Clark has gotten them both. All right, so here come the Huskies now, first and 10, football at the 27-yard line of Indiana State after that block punt. Nicholson again at quarterback. Puts a man in motion, comes to the right side and hold it. We've got a flag down right away. Looks like the play clock ran out. 
Yep, delay a game. Ouch, ouch, guys. You got well, coming out of a timeout. You would think you got everything. Happen. That shouldn't happen. Should never happen. And that will should drive Jerry happen. Kill absolutely crazy. Well, I mean, you know, it's just it's just that it's that little bit of that air out of that balloon. You can build on that on that block punt. Fake the handoff, looking long. He's looking corner of the end zone, and it is just overthrown. Wow. Nathan Palmer couldn't quite get it. Jim Blaney standing by. JB, welcome. What's up, buddy? Tom, after that first offensive series for Northern ended in the touchdown, when the receivers came off the field, their coaches were effusive in their praise for the wide receivers on the job they did of blocking. But they were told, do not look at the scoreboard. We are going to take this game drive by drive by drive. Back to you. Thanks, Jimmy. Cap, how about that one? Effusive. Effusive. <laughs> effusive. I don't even know if Fenwick uses effusive. Not very often, anyway. Receivers split to both sides. Nicholson waits. Now it's a handoff going right up the middle, and he'll get a couple across the 30 to about the 29 yard line. Jaden Everett on the stop, yeah. among others. Yeah, watch Everett. Watch these guys step up and make a play. They shed a blocker. There's a Damsky, the center, and then you see Everett just fill the hole and he gets some help from one of his big guys up front. One of the big uglies comes up, makes a play. John uh, Goodrich. You know, Jaden Everett was in the hole before he was. The one thing you can't do as, as a tackler, any young guys out there, you have to keep your head up. You have to see what you're going to tackle, not only from a tackle standpoint, but from a safety first standpoint. And now Indiana State has taken a timeout. So the Sycamores want a timeout, and they'll get it. One of the things that I always look for in football games is after you've coached for a long time is that body language. And I, I, I just don't see Indiana State, the Sycamores, hopping around at all. I mean, granted, they've had you know, a, a couple of bad plays in this game, but this game is early on. You have to get some juice. You have to get some fire. You have to jump around. Guys, five-year anniversary of one of the big games in Northern Illinois history. This was a win over Alabama. This was a phenomenal win, taking a team down to Alabama. They had great, great players. Michael the Burner Turner. And they came down and they shocked the Crimson Tide. Watch the throw here. Boy, Josh you know, Haldy. I'm not into all these signature wins and stuff, that term, but this is a signature win. This was huge. And that is Dan Sheldon. And watch the celebration. Uh, there's Joe Novak. And you talk about, as you just said, a signature win, a statement win. Northern Illinois, after beating Maryland right here on national TV, goes into Alabama and shocks the Crimson Tide. Tom, what do you think of Joe's vertical right there? <laughs> <laughs> That's as excited as you'll ever see Joe Novak. You talk about a gentleman. Wow. Class act. Trips to the right side. Nicholson fades, looking, throws, and it is incomplete. Pretty good coverage on that play. Uh, this this is going to be iffy. I mean, th that right there, that coverage, I think he's just a little, you know, one thing, come back for the football, regardless of where you're at. Come back. Don't stand away from the ball. Don't let him close. Come back. Come back a little crisper and come back away from the defender. Remember one thing, you catch a football with your eyes, not your hands. All right, let's see. I think they're going to try the field goal here, which I think is a pretty good decision. Uh, I was watching Mike Salerno warm up oh, he before was, the game. He was hammering him, wasn't he? 55 yards, and he was clearing it by five yards easy. He's got a long of 49 on the season. Snap back, ball down, and the kick is long enough. It's high enough, and it is good. Very impressive. Very Count impressive. It. 10 nothing Northern after the long field goal. 4.55 left in the first. Huskies are rolling. College life is great, but aren't you sick of living in cramped spaces, lack of privacy, ramen noodles? At University Plaza, we can help. It's like a Chicago high rise with a friendly family feel. From enjoying the pleasures of private bathrooms and a restaurant style food court, to keeping fit in a fully equipped fitness center, to lounging in the pool or a hot tub. Experience so much more for less than what you might think. If you've never been here, you owe it to yourself to check us out. University Plaza, big city atmosphere in the heart of NIU. Never before 
has the gecko been captured on film talking about RV insurance? So, y you guys travel a lot. You should check out Geico and get a free rate quote on RV insurance. This is truly history in the making. You can also get a rate quote on motorcycle insurance, ATV insurance, personal watercraft insurance. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'm up here. Geico, saving you money on insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. 10 nothing, Northern Illinois with the lead, 4.55 left. Second Northern Illinois, how about four plays, minus two yards and a 46-yard field goal that he hammered. He could have made that from about 55 or so yards. All right, you got Ryan Patrick, number one, and number six, Kyle Monroe, the deep guys for Indiana State. Very high end-over-end kick. That's Monroe that'll take it at about the five-yard line, makes a move. He's wrapped up, doesn't quite make it to the 20-yard line. Stop by Dan Keller. Northern Illinois rolling offensively a little bit, guys. Ten points, a nice start. Yeah, they do a real nice job at controlling the line of scrimmage. They get a nice run here. And when Nicholson got chances to throw the football, he also was effective. Here's uh, Miko Brown with a real good run. That sets everything up. And then the easy toss off the play action. Just send it to the corner, throw it to that box in the back of the end zone, and get a six. Handoff goes right up the middle and the ball. Yeah, it was a terrific, terrific stop on that play. Looked like the ball came out for a second. This is one of those that you'll have on a highlight reel at the end of the year. I mean, this is great recognition. He lowers his shoulder. I talked about running backs with legs. Same thing when you tackle. You never tackle to a ball carrier. You tackle through a ball carrier. Well, he did that. There's no question about that. Loss of a couple, make it second and 12. Now he's going to change the play and, and hold it. Yep. Start. Got down into a three-point stance and then came back to hear the change. You know, so. In my uh, pregame keys, two of the things that I talked about was no penalties. You can't put yourself in a hole when you're an underdog and you're on the road. Secondly was the kicking game. The kicking game is critically important. I said they can't make Northern Illinois play on a short field because they are going to score. Northern Illinois will score, but make them score on a long field, cause fumbles, cause mistakes, make interceptions. That's the chance that you have. Dowdle, calls for it, high snap, and the ball is loose in the backfield. I think Dowdle got back on it. Northern Illinois says they've got it. The ball is loose on a pile like that, and you're the quarterback. You I think better be giving fighting it to Indiana for it. State, and they are. Let me tell you something. Larry English just blows this play up. You're going to see a blur come flying in here at 51. The fumble occurred because they saw Larry English coming to blow him up. Watch this. Acceleration. Look at him. He. This. But I'm going to tell you something. You talk to the Northern Illinois coaches. You see that play. He plays like that Monday through Thursday. It's explosion. It's that first step. He is one of the better defensive linemen in this conference, if not the best defensive lineman in this conference. I mean, th this kid has got to be just a lot of fun. And, and that is a kid that will play on Sundays. He Mar is Marmion Academy, a kid from right down the street. And big time academics. He shows you the entire package. Third and 25. Trip Bobby, receivers to the right side. Do you dare throw the ball here? Maybe you have to throw the ball here. Donald fades back, steps up. Now he's going to run it, and he's going nowhere. Gets across the five to about the eight-yard line, and it will be fourth down. Hanson, among others, on the stop, and NIU is going to get it back. You mentioned a big-time academics with Larry English. Let me tell you something. 3-1, Larry English. Mike Krause, 3-4. Alex Crutch, 3-7 GPA. Craig Roosh, 4.0 GPA. And that's just the front defensive four. That's the front four. defensive four. I mean, would, would this be a great bunch to deal with on a day in and day out basis? Wow. Brown is at about the Indiana State 44 yard line now, ready to receive the punt. Here's the kick, and almost blocked. They did run into the punter, no call. Brown will take it about his own 45. Makes a move across the 50, makes another move, still on his feet. Down to about the Illinois State or Indiana State 44 yard line. 
Ryan Roberts on the stop, and Northern will have it first and ten in great field position. Nice job by the officials not to go for the acting job in the end zone because he went down like somebody had drilled him and oh, he yeah. barely got oh, touched. Yeah. Not a theater major either. <laughs> no, not a theater major. No. Hey, let, let me say this. You, know, you talked about uh, Jerry Kill inheriting this football program from Joe Novak. Jerry Kill has an unbelievable amount of respect for Joe Novak. And one of the, one of the reasons why you respect a guy like Joe Novak Look at the young guys, the backgrounds of the young guys that he's recruited here. By the 12 way, captains out of 22 starters. Demarcus Grady's now in at quarterback, so we'll get our first look at the freshman. Rolls out to the right side, keeps going, and gets it to about the 40-yard line, a gain of four, make it second and six. Now, is there any truth when you were a recruiting coordinator, if a kid had a higher GPA than you ever had, you wouldn't recruit him? Not true, David. <laughs> not, not true. <laughs> All right, we've changed quarterbacks. We see a little option play. Why is this great? Everybody that Northern plays, all their opponents will get this tape. More to prep for. And, well, let me say now, okay, all those defensive coordinators are going, no. Who's got the quarterback? Who's got the pitch? Why are they doing this to me? If you have to prepare for option football, that's a big chunk of your preparation. Brady, 6'1", 200-pound redshirt freshman. Back in the shotgun. This time it's a handoff going around the left side. Clanton now makes a move, cuts back, looking for an opening and finds one. He's to the 30, down near the 25-yard line. First down, Huskies. Watch him make a cut off of the official. Watch him make this cut off the official. This play starts out to the left, reverses his field, good feet, keeps his feet moving, looks for that little, ah, there he is right there, oh, a little pick. That's for a pick play for the two of you. There it is. Great job, great run. Those we find, if we find out they're related, we'll know it was in the playbook. <laughs> Those reverse plays seldom work that way if they're if they're uh, not choreographed. Now Nicholson comes back in at quarterback. Right in the middle of a drive. Now he's looking long. Throws. He's got a man open, and it is caught and dropped. Nathan Palmer had it for just a second. That's the second time I think Nathan's had one go off his hands. Got to hang on to the football. Justin Collins there on the stop knocked it loose. You have to make this catch. You have to be able to make this catch. The ball is well thrown. High point, high point. He's got it. Look it in. Pull it in. Catch the football with your eyes. The one thing I'd be concerned about offensively for Northern Illinois right now, one quarterback's in there for the run, the other one from the throw don't want a tendency like that. Or you know what's going to happen when this guy comes in? Zing, zing, boom. Blitz, blitz, blitz. Motion, second and ten. Give goes to Brown. Look at He makes a cut to the outside. He's across the 20. Looking upfield inside the 15. Lowers his shoulder. Gets down to about the 12-yard line. Another Husky first down. Boy, he has quick feet. When he gets to the corner, his feet just don't stop. Who does he remind you of? Garrett Wolf. Thank you. No question. I didn't want to say that. I wanted you to say it or Tom, Tommy to say it. I didn't want to say it. No question. He's got, I mean, oh, my goodness. I mean, one of the things I think I really like from Northern, the play selection and, and the execution, and the execution of the fundamentals. 10 nothing Huskies. They've got the football and knocking on the door one more time, looking for more play, more points. Here's Brown, cuts to the left side, bounces off a tackler, looking for more, finally cuts it upfield, and the Huskies again are right there. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full-service on- and off-site catering. 
For more information, go to paddyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. When you're looking for a luxury vehicle, is this all you see? How about now? What about now? Most people will consider two or three of these. But when you look at all seven costs, you'll see why the Lexus ES has the lowest cost of ownership in its class. For a clearer picture, visit your Lexus dealer. Lease the 2008 ES350 for $409 a month for 36 months with $3609 due at signing. 10-0 Northern Illinois on an absolutely gorgeous day here in DeKalb. Kids are out here enjoying football and Northern looking for a win. First down, football again just outside the 10-yard line. Motion man comes across, goes right back. Nicholson gives to Brown, looking for a little room inside. He's going to get to about the 10-yard line. Ron Hardy there on the stop. Gain of about, a, about two yards on the play, second and eight. Well, here's where you just got to flex your muscles and just move some people out of the way and give this guy just a seat. That's all he needs. Watch number 34, the fullback. Bam! I mean, keeps his legs moving. That is a fine execution of a fullback block. Poof, the helmet comes flying off. Great contact. I like a fullback that can block. You don't see fullbacks. Fullbacks are kind of dinosaurs, Cap, Tommy. Dying breed, you're right. Nicholson, receiver split to both sides. Again, the give goes to Brown, follows his big fellas up the middle, gets inside the 10, down to about the seven or eight yard line. Jaden Everett, outside linebacker there on the stop. And it brings up third down. A little resistance, guys if they run into the guts of the defense, but you wear them down. This is an undersized Indiana State squad that you would think you just keep pounding away with the big uglies, the 300 pounders, and you run your runner backs in there, the fullback as you love, flying in there, very physical. By the third and fourth quarter, they're gonna be worn down. Exactly, David. You chip, chip, chip away at that big rock, that big stone, and if you chip at it enough, after a while it shatters. Third and five, fake a give to Brown. Nicholson rolling out, looking into the end zone. Throws, caught and dropped and intercepted. intercepted. Dropped and intercepted. Donnie McCluskey, I think, is the one who comes up with it. How about this? It's deflected and goes right to him. Well, I thought he was going to tuck and run with it. Watch him as he rolls out now. He's got plenty of time. He looks, he looks, he looks. Now he drills it in there. I'm not quite sure that he didn't have possession make the it might catch have been for a touchdown. touchdown. Yeah, it might have been a touchdown, yeah. Good point, David. This could be very close. He, he should throw the ball now. Throw it now. And then he throws it across his body, which always scares me just a little bit. See, if you watch the other angle, I'm not so sure he didn't have possession long enough that it's a score. But it's a moot point. Donald fakes, now he's looking long. He's got a man deep and it is knocked away. Accidentally knocked away. Chase Carter, I think as he had his back turned, Carter had the ball hit him. So it's incomplete. One more look, Cap. Yeah, I think this is a touchdown. He has got it right there. That's possession and he's got, the, I think the foot is down already before the ball gets punched out. Real it's nice close. reactions, yeah. I gotta tell you to come up with that interception by McCleskey. That was a big time play. It was Christmas in September. That's it, baby. <laughs> Second and 10, Dowdle with a keeper now throws to the left side and it's incomplete. Jim Blaney down on the field. What's up, JB? Tom, I was down on the Indiana State bench when their offense came off the field the last time and obviously they've had problems moving the football. So what do you do if you're a coach? And I bet Bob knows the answer. First of all, you put a little kick to the fanny and then you start coaching. They started to go back and over basics with guys, told them to keep it simple and execute. It's a pretty simple game, but it's sometimes hard to do. Back to you. Well, you mentioned the term, when you get them off to the side, there comes a point in time where you know you just gotta you know, settle down. We're in this game, just settle down. We can't make these types of mistakes. We, we have to work on the kicking game. You have to bring your legs when you block. Just go believe in, believe in the plan that we came in here with. Donald fades back, rolls out to the right side, throws and drills one in there, and that one was caught. Real nice throw by Dowdell. I mean, he really yeah. put that on a frozen yeah. rope. He has a nice, 
I think he has a great throwing motion. Great throwing motion. I mean, he's going to look, look, look. You know, he can feel pressure coming. Larry English is right behind him, and he splits the seam with a real good throw. That is as quick a release as I've seen on a rollout in, in some time. This young guy's very athletic. Six feet tall, 200 pounds, sophomore, a lot of good football ahead of him. Football at the 31-yard line. Fakes a give, now throws, going out to the left side, and the pass he has caught. Ryan Patrick there with the catch is downed immediately, and guys, all of a sudden, Indiana State starting to move the football a little bit. Well, you know, with the play action, the play action's very deceptive in, in, in this offense. It has so much draw on the linebackers. It has so much draw on the secondary. Then you detach the football, boom, throw the football downfield. That's tough to defend. Northern has to be very disciplined from a defensive standpoint to stop this football team. A lot of confidence maybe off of a turnover. Now Dell saw a little blitz and started to make a call. Now throws. Patrick's got it, making a move. Comes right back through the middle. And he stopped maybe a gain of a yard. Mike Sobel there on the stop. There's a lot of football coaches that will call this type of a play basically an elongated pitch. In other words, you're not going to turn around and toss the ball, but it's, it, it should have the same effect, especially, as we mentioned, from the Northern Illinois standpoint, the ability to block by the wide receivers. The ability to block in this offense by the Sycamore wide receivers is equally important, if not more important, because of the offense that they were. Trent Miles, we just got a shot of him. The Indiana yeah. State coach was an assistant here to Charlie Sadler. Third and four. Dowdell looks, throws, and Patrick there again with the catch just across the 40. That's a first down. We've got a flag down. Nope, no flag. Okay. They picked it up. What's interesting from the northern defensive standpoint is the packages. They shuffle three in, they take two out, they take three out, four come in, four come out. That can be, get very, very complicated on, at times. We talked about fundamentals. Get lined up, play football. Dowdell looking. Now changes the play. Saw something. Let's see what he found out. And we've got movement. Yep, 70. Offensive line. Yep, Jansen Hayes, the Hayes, big fella. 6'3", yep. three, three and a quarter. Peyton Manning it up at the line with the orchestrations. Just call the play and let's go. Well, you know, you get these big guys. You run, a no, you run the offense out onto the field and you call a play. They get down in that stance. They want to come off of that football. And that's why the quarterback has to, you know, he has to understand. Get him in there. Say, look, I'm going to change the cadence up just a little bit here and there. Just sit in there. Hang in there. You'll be fine. Now first and 15. Dowdell. Fades back, looking again. It's a little screen pass, and it will go out of bounds incomplete. Well, somebody got a hand up. I don't know if it was Larry English, but somebody got a big old paw up there and tipped that thing and made it that much tougher to catch. You know, one of the things I've seen from the Sycamore wide receivers and the running backs is that play, as I mentioned, the elongated the elongated pitch. You have, you can't. Wide receivers and running backs, when they get that play, they know they're, they may just get really tattooed immediately, and they have a tendency to look downfield. Look downfield, you will not make that catch. Catch the football, take it for what it's worth. If that's what the gain is, that's what the gain is before you start to look downfield and set up your blockers. Trip receivers to the right. Dowdell now fades back under some pressure, throws. It's a cutback. He's got it across the 40, out near midfield. They'll mark him down at the 49-yard line. Mike Krause among others right there. This was a pretty good look in. This is a very, very difficult play to orchestrate. When you have, you're pulling linemen, you're cross blocking with, with the wide receivers. Watch the jump, watch the way this is orchestrated. First of all, the play action fake, good. Then getting the football over the first defender. Now coming back, it's almost a wall that's set up like, like a punt. Yeah, also had two Northern Illinois players. One cut the legs out of the under, the other. So they were both out of the play. Third and three, Pick and it's intercepted, and he is going. Got one man to beat, nice cutback. Bradley Pruitt takes it to the house, six points, Huskies. You can see it developing from up here, boys. He jumped the route, beautiful job, looked it in, caught it, gone, one cutback, give him six. When you have a corner playing the way Northern's corner was playing 34, you cannot perseverate. 
on that wide receiver. What you have saying? to look him off. You have to look at a, a, another receiver. When you your eyes are glued, that corner is looking right into the quarterback's eyes. What does that mean? What is perseverance? Yeah. Over focusing. Okay. Okay. We'll you trust you. You, you say so, yeah. I couldn't get into Fenwick. You went to Fenwick. <laughs> I wanted to throw that word out last year. Extra point is good. 952 left. 17 nothing Huskies a good defensive stop and they put seven more on the board fresh at Jill Osco it's not just about the food it also describes the way we do things from our deli and butcher to our bakery then in every department we're dedicated to giving you our very best so whatever you're in the market for, you can always find it here. Fresh to your family from Jewel Osco. Hey, Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. We carry the best brands, gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. 17-0 Northern with a lead, 9.52 left. How about a 54-yard interception and touchdown? It's our University Plaza drive summary. It's where to live. You intercept the football and see a quarterback in front of you guys, you usually get pretty excited. You've got to think as a DB somehow, I'll be able to handle him. There's no doubt about it. And early on, in my keys to the game, no turnovers. Again, you're an underdog. You're coming into a hostile environment. You're on the road. You're trying to establish an identity for your football program. You have to take care of the football. Well, they've had a punt blocked. And they've also had the pick six. I mean, those are two just cardinal ones. Absolutely hammered. Justin Collins just got murdered. Demarcus Grady was right there. Yeah, let's take a look. We're talking about turnovers. Here comes a block. Take it right off his foot. Eat it up. And the Huskies are in business. And then Bradley Pruitt just jumps the route. Beautiful job. Make one cut. See ya. Touchdown, NIU. Ball should have never, ever been thrown. Ever. And talk about a wide receiver between two defenders. Come back for that football. If you can't catch it, bat it to the ground. He was between two defenders. He was behind both of them. He needed to come up now if he was going to have any chance of catching that football. Darius Gates is in as the tailback. New quarterback throws out to the right side. Pass is complete. Calvin Schmidtke, a freshman out of University Place, Washington, is in as the quarterback. His first pass goes complete. You know, early on in the show, I mentioned one of the keys uh, for Indiana State was Darius Gates. He's, he's a local young guy from Country Club Hills, Illinois, Hillcrest High School. Kind of a homecoming for him. Wants to have a great game. I'm sure he's got a lot of friends, relatives, and teammates that have, that have come out here to DeKalb to watch the game. He's, Watch to do his best, I'm sure. Take the give. Mickey now the keeper, and he's going to be right there about the 20-yard line. Jim Blaney down in the field. What's your Tom, just a matter of housekeeping here. The Indiana State quarterback change, nothing to do with injury. The Indiana State coach is just trying to figure out a way how to get something going because they just, they're not getting any positive yardage at all, and it's just been a struggle so far today. They're just trying to change it up to find something that works. Back to you. Yeah, when it's 17-nothing and you just threw a pick for a touchdown, you got to think maybe a little bit shell shocked. I, I think it's I think the change in quarterbacks for Indiana State's premature. Another interception. This one not the quarterback's fault. Corey Hansen right there as the pass was deflected, and the Huskies continue to get the ball in terrific field position. Well, I would bet. You, first of all, let's take a look at the interception. That's going to really upset the head coach for Indiana State. Trent Miles, not a happy camper, but there's the throw. Wasn't a great throw, but off the hands, and there's the pick. 
the wide receiver needs to keep running. He needs to keep running across the face of that linebacker. That interception is not on the quarterback. That interception right there is on number five, the wide receiver. Yeah, he wasn't really looking for the ball. He turned back, turned his head back as the ball was coming in. Nicholson back in at quarterback. You wonder how long Indiana State's defense can hang in there. They played a fairly decent first half. You now here they stiffen and stop the run. But I would bet Northern Illinois is going to go down the field and see if they can really stick a dagger in and get it to 24 you know, Down on the field, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's hot, but it is warm. And as a defensive unit, you're on that field that long, you are going to start getting worn out. Why? For a lot of reasons. The obvious, the running around, the tackling and all that. The other reason is the physical ability of Northern Illinois offensive line. The Northern Illinois offensive line, I think, is very well coached. They're big, they're strong, they're physical, and, and very, very technique sound. Very technique sound. Marcus Grady back in at quarterback as they continue this shifting back and forth. Now Grady with a run goes around the left side. It's a keeper. And he is going to be thrown down right about the 20 yard line. Nice tackle. Tanya McCleskey there on the stop. What happens in, in, in football, okay, if you take from the defensive side, okay, it's reaction. When, it, when you're going against option football, it becomes assignment. It becomes assignment. Who's got the pitch? Who's got the quarterback? And it takes that the bit out of the horse's mouth just a little bit just a little squeeze you can't let them run. you're not gonna be able to run as wild as you do uh, not to say you run wild but I mean in a disciplined fashion but option football defending option football has to be very disciplined because it's assignment not reaction 65 Jason Oni Buagu is in a 6 2 305 pound guy on the offensive line and Northern's gonna throw and they've got a man there it's good to <laughs> How about the guy they say isn't going to throw it? Brady is the running quarterback. Comes around the right side. Everybody's thinking run, and then he just drops it off. You guys talked about it earlier. You want to show something to every other team Northern's going to play? How about this play right here? You think he's going to throw, run it every time? Nope, and that's a nice pass. That's why I like this offense. You get the quarterback on the perimeter. You give him a run-throw option. He pumps one time. They come up. He throws it over them. They, they stick with the, with the wide receiver and play man-to-man. -man. Now what? He runs the ball into the end zone. Great point, Tom. Great point. Erno there on the extra point. Matt Simon is rolling out right along with DeMarcus Grady. Grady's going to look. This is pass all the way, and it is six more. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Every Monday, catch the Bears recap on Comcast Sportsnet. Hear what Lovey Smith has to say about the previous game and get a full preview of the upcoming weekend's matchup. Don't miss the Bears recap every Monday at 5, only on Comcast Sportsnet. For over 20 years, Discover Wisconsin has been bringing you the sights, sounds, and personality of our great state. Whether it's relaxing in a spa, enjoying an amazing event, or simply taking in the scenery, you can find it here every week. Visit discoverwisconsin.com to learn even more or to register to win a Wisconsin getaway, like a memorable visit to the Boulder Junction, Manitowish Waters area. Make sure to tune in this weekend for another exciting destination. Discover Wisconsin this Saturday morning at 10 o'clock right here on Comcast Sportsnet. Every Thursday, no other show goes more in-depth on your Chicago Bears than Countdown to Kickoff. Join Pro Bowl cornerback Nathan Vasher and 85 Bear Tom Thayer as they break down every angle before the weekend's big matchup. Keys to the game, matchups to look for, and analysis from two Bears who know football. Plus, this all-star duo answers questions directly from you, the Chicago Bears fan. Don't miss Countdown to Kickoff with Nathan Vasher and Tom Thayer every Thursday at 11, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Twenty-four nothing Huskies with a lead. Six forty-nine left. Corby Kramer and Reese Craig back deep to receive the Simon kick. And here it comes, high, deep, end over end kick. This will be about five yards deep, and he's going to bring it out. Makes a move, and he is stopped right there at about the fifteen-yard line. 
Tyler Clacy there with the stop. University Plaza drive summary time. It's where to live. Three plays, 25 yards, took just over a minute and a half. Grady's first career pass is also his first career touchdown pass. Simon catches the 19-yard TD. Matt Simon out of Farmington, Minnesota, and my college roommate, Mike Marcuson, who's the O-line coach at Ole Miss, played at Farmington, Minnesota High School. He says one of the best receivers to come out of that area in a long time. Give goes up the middle, and boy, now nothing working for Indiana State. Sycamore's looking for an opening. T.J. Griffin, among others, right there. Huskies guys look like they are really tuned in. Right well, now. they're creating uh, Tommy. They're creating a new line of scrimmage, and that's what you want. You want to get those. You want to get the heels depth of the offensive lineman, and then pursue from there. And don't create any lateral seams that are back. In other words, you want to create a unified front. If you keep the football inside and in front of the defense. You've always got a chance. Calvin Schmidtke, the quarterback, fakes a give, rolls out. He's got pressure, rolling out, and he is going to be stopped. Back at about the 10 yard line, Brandon Vice right there with the tackle. 24 0 is our score here. First half at Northern Illinois. They've got a block punt, they've got touchdown passes. The defense has been really good so far. And 24 0, the Huskies pitching the shutout. And here, uh, Indiana State's third down and 15 as again that Husky defense has been the story. This is so frustrating from our head coach's standpoint. Trent Miles, you're just looking for something, something to hang your hat on. Smithy fades back, got some pressure, now he's gonna run it. He's across the 10, makes a move, gets out to about the 15 yard line. That's close to the original line of scrimmage, but nowhere near a first down and it's fourth down. Chase Carter and Corey Hansen right there. Well, they ride Larry English out of the play, but the rest of the red shirts just track him down. They got no shot here. I, I, that was not a, a, a called quarterback draw. No. That, that was just. Not third and 15. No, 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 no out. way. Yeah. That was a, an act of frustration. Nico Brown back deep to receive about his own 45 yard line. Here's the punt. It's almost blocked again, and it's not a very good kick. High spiral will bounce out of bounds in Indiana State territory at the Sycamore 43 yard line. Four minutes, 44 seconds left, first half, 24 0 Northern Illinois. Imagine a place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest, low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. Are you ready for a good shopping experience? Hi, I'm Mike Abt with App Electronics and Appliances. Since 1936, our goal has been our customers' complete satisfaction. Whether you're replacing a TV or a refrigerator, building a dream kitchen or a home theater, our knowledgeable staff can assist you. Visit our website at abt.com to get one-year financing plus free shipping. Apt, pleasing people since 1936. Welcome back to DeKalb, 24-0 here. Huskies with the lead over the Sycamores of Indiana State. DeMarcus Grady has been alternating with Dan Nicholson. Grady last time threw his first pass, a first touchdown pass. What do you got, Cap? Indiana State has a bit of an NIU or MAC connection. Tim McGuire was the head coach, 98-04. He was the D coordinator here under Jerry Pettibone. Lou West, who was the coach last time Indiana State came to DeKalb. Uh, was the Toledo defensive coordinator under Tom Amstutz. And Trent Miles, the current head coach, was the NIU receivers coach under Charlie Sadler. Playing with all kinds of room, pushes it up ahead. Inside the 30 to about the 28-yard line, and that's a big first down. You know, we talk about quarterbacks being a complete quarterback. One of the things is faking. Watch the draw on this fake. I mean, that is excellent. He had everybody going. Absolutely. Everybody going the other way. It secures the football. Great job. Young quarterbacks, you have to be able to fake. It sets so many different things up for you. A lot of times, it's overlooked. But the first, the last four steps were running backwards. Run around the right side. We've got a flag down. 
Clinton came around that right side, and as Cappy said, looks like it is going to be a hold. Yep, they're going to get Dan Keller, the big fella. I think felt he was beaten, reached out, and grabbed. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on a replay, but it certainly looked like he got his arms out, extended away from his body. If you keep him within the framework of your shoulder, you're never going to get called. Exactly. And from a, from a pure technique standpoint, as an offensive lineman, you can't emphasize enough hands inside, hands inside. If your hands are inside the framework of the defender's body and his hands are outside, you as a smaller lineman can actually control a bigger defensive line. Hands inside. Brady gives straight up the middle, all kinds of room for Clem, and he's going to get across the 20, down to about the 19-yard line. Nice, nice gain to all there on the stop. This is a fatigued, this is a fatigued Sycamore defense. They, we've got Northern's got a hat on a hat, a push on a push. They bring their legs. Yeah, just you can see right there, as you said. He's going to hit that first wave, and now they're just a step slower. They're exhausted. They've been out here all day. It's warm. It's over 80 degrees. Second down and six. Brady now steps back. Quarterback keeper. Oh, he's got a nice hole. Gets it across the 15. Inside the 10. He's down to about the seven-yard line. What well, nice run. They may have got away with a mask at the end of it. May have grabbed him in the face Jayden mask, but Everett did a real good job to tuck and run to and then bump and just kind of find his way. Bobby, he picked his way and bounced off tackles. Another. It all starts with the feet. If you keep your feet moving, I can't emphasize it enough. You're a ball carrier. You keep your feet moving, you've got a chance. You'll get bumped. You'll get turned. The defender stops, stops moving his feet. You keep your feet moving, you'll beat him every time. That is great athleticism. Great athleticism on this young man's part. First and goal. Brady taking his time. Play clock running down. Rolls out to the right side. It's a keeper, and he's going right behind his line and runs untouched into the end zone. Touchdown, NIU. I can't, I, I can't emphasize this enough. This Sycamore defense has been on the field far too long. When you see guys standing up off the line of scrimmage, you get a hat on a hat. And I mean, right, look at it. They're pad under pad. And now he made a uh, little cut back back to the inside. And you know what? He's cruising in there. He's not just single. He's, he's coming off of those blocks. Well, as you like to say, he chokes his motor down chokes until he has to then just chokes open his motor it up and down. go. Cappy, you've heard me say that a million times. He choked his motor down and let the block be set up. A fatigued football team will play high. And right now, the Sycamore team is playing high because they are fatigued. A good football team, a well-coached team, a team that has not been on the field that long, plays with great pad level. They play pad under pad. Low man wins. It's all about technique in the offensive line. Here's our scoring drive. Four plays, 43 yards, 212. Grady with a six yard TD run. And that scoring drive brought to you by the University Plaza. It's where to live. I used to live right next to the University Plaza because I was the assistant basketball coach here at Northern Illinois back in 1982 through 86. Kept, you my you age spent bit. more time in my den than you did over at that place where you stayed. This is That's true. where we bonded. We bonded there. We did. We bonded in his den, and then I tried to get a date with his babysitter. Okay, let's get back to football, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Cappy, Cappy, Cappy. You two guys. Kramer and Craig back deep to receive. Very high end over end kick. Taken by Kramer. Comes across the 10, looking to make a move, and he's hit at about the 20, 21 yard line. Stop there. And there's the quarterback that normally would be the starter, Hornish. Chandler Harnish. And this is a guy that, fellas, easily won this starting job. He was the man. You know, it, this young guy here I mean, is so discouraging early in the season. 6'2", 210, a redshirt freshman. He gets the nod uh, out of uh, Bluffton, uh, Bluffton, Indiana. I mean, a good-looking kid. He, he's, gonna, he's got a lot of football ahead of him. They have an excellent training staff here, excellent orthopedic staff. But, you know, you're a young guy. You practice all. You know, I mean, you live for this. And all of a sudden, that fast, you know, you're watching. Mickey looking and a nice pass. But 
ball was incomplete. It looked like that could have been a completion and a fumble, but Patrick George didn't allow the completion. It's incomplete. Well, what a shot. Josh Jones, I mean, gets lit up. The throw is great. The throw's right on the money. He makes the catch, and then, bam, before he can tuck it, say goodbye. Defense is knowing where your help is at. They gave me the sandwich out of him. We, that's called wow. pursuit. You coach pursuit. You run to the football on every play. Great defenses pursue well. David Bryant. Give us to Gates guys. a big hole. He gets across the 30 out for a first down. Guys, you, Cappy, you mentioned that you were an assistant basketball coach. His brother's an assistant basketball coach here, Gates' brother. And so a little family tie as well. We're talking about ties to the two schools. Absolutely. I was back here in 1982 through 1986. Place looks a lot different today. Oh my goodness, how about this football stadium and this in this football this, facility? The Jordan Center, oh. which is in the end zone. If we get a chance, we'll show you a shot of it. it. I went on a tour and I said, wait a minute, I'm doing the game at Northern Illinois. I'm not at Nebraska. Yeah, right. It is absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. They deserve a lot of kudos for everything they've been able to accomplish. Good as any. Keeper. Good as any you'll see in the United States, Tommy. Sobel with the stop. Ball right at the 40-yard line. Make it uh, second down and a long three here for Indiana State. Sycamore's guys looking for their first touchdown of the year. Not just a rushing or a passing or an intercept. Any kind of touchdown would be their first of the year. Well, they've been outscored 90 to three. Ouch. 90 yeah, to three. Yeah, that, that hurts. Fake looks. Now Tucks looking up the field. Throws, and it is caught and dropped. Had it right in his hand. Ryan Patrick had it, just could not hang on. Well, the quarterback deserves a lot of credit because he had Brandon Bice bearing down on him from the backside, and he just stepped up and made the throw. That's got to be caught. Well, he did a good job setting up Mike Krause. Mike Krause got into the pass rush very early. Good first step. You're always looking that for that for a defensive lineman. He, he tucked up and then came out on the outside, got out on the perimeter, was able to throw the football. Got to keep that football inside the perimeter of the defense. Just over a minute left here in the first half. Schmitke fades back, got all kinds of time, steps up, throws. Pass is caught, trying to dive forward. Gates lost it, and let's see where they're going to mark it. I thought he was down when the ball came loose. I don't know if the officials are going to agree with that, but it certainly looked like his knee was down. In any event, the ball went out. Uh, ball did go out of bounds also. We get a good look at it here, guys. There's a little check down, and when he, the ball comes out, let's see. Oh, yeah, I think you might have been right, it's Cap. Yeah. That left knee may well have been down. Yeah, that's what I call Cap. You get your stripe shirt. There you go. That's it. Either good way. Good call. Good either call. way, it is going to be a punt. Fourth down. Nico Brown back deep to receive. Just about his own 24-yard line. Letting the clock run down as far as they can. A very, very high kick. He'll take it about his own 31 and fumble it, and it picked up by Indiana State. We've got a flag down. The flag came down immediately, guys. I don't think the flag is going to affect this play. He could have killed he, the clock did, with the punt. But did he signal a fair catch first and then run with it? Yes, he did. I'm telling you, he signaled for this. He's not agreeing with the call, but if you look at it again, right at the start of the play, he's got one of his hands up right near his helmet, and the official interpreted that as a signal of a fair catch. Coming up, we'll have our Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. Fatty's the official pre- and post-game tailgate place of NIU football. Right now, 24 seconds on the clock. They have Put points on the board. I, I, seriously, I would take I would take chances here. There, there's no doubt in my mind I would take chances. Here. He started to throw and then he lost it. It's loose. loose on the ground. Let's see who came up with it. Sycamore. Ouch. I mean, this pocket just collapses around him. Got to take a little bit of a deeper drop. He's got a little too long holding on to that football. 
they, they have to they have to construct something, uh, cobble together something offensively to get the football in, in, into the end zone. To perhaps even kick a field goal before the end of the half. A flea flicker, something. You got to exactly. do something to to try and put six on the board. Uh, I, uh, right now, it, it, you know, 31 points. You're down 31 points. I mean, this this. This is not, you know, taking a chance here is not going to win or lose the football game for you. You have to do something. If you could go in, the half, in at the half on a positive mental note, it will bode well for the second half for you, even though the, the great discrepancy in the score. You know, when you talk, you coach the whole game. You coach the whole game. You tell that quarterback, okay, we're going to try a little bit of this, a little bit of that. If it's not there, fine. Take off and run with the football. Second down, they'll call it second 14, 17 seconds left. McFay's back, steps up in the pocket, throws, tosses it right over the middle, across the 30, down to about the 25, just shy of a first down. Clock running 7.9 seconds left. And now the Sycamores call a timeout. Do you run your field goal kicker out there, Bob? 31 down. I'm going to try to throw the ball in the end zone. I, 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 you've got two, two shots at that end zone if, if you do it right. You've got two shots at that end zone. I'm going to try to throw the ball in the end zone. And guy Schmidtke's looked pretty good. He has uh, bought himself some time. He's hitting guys right in the numbers. They just a few times haven't been able to make the catch. No, he hit a couple of guys. You're exactly right, TD, that you got to make the play. I mean, if you're, you're Trent Miles right now, I mean, you are like, there has to be something. You get your assistant coaches together. Here's the deal, okay? You haven't scored a touchdown now in, what, 12 quarters of, uh, uh, of football? This right now, from a mental standpoint, this is where you have to coach football above the shoulders, more importantly than below the shoulders. And I'm not saying this is gonna happen, please. I'm not saying this is gonna happen. You get in a spot like this, you do the wrong thing or say the wrong thing, you start to lose your football team. And it looks like they are going to kick it, guys. Martinez is their kicker, and he has obviously got the only points of the year for the Sycamores. Looking at a 42-yarder here. Northern Makers from 22. This kick is on the way, and it is good. And how about that? You see the guys on the sideline for Indiana State? They're all applauding. They're excited. They put three points on the board. A little, little jump in your step. 31-3 is our halftime score as the Sycamores put up some points right as halftime comes up. They've got to feel at least a little bit better about that, that they're able to put some points up. Standing by to go down to the field with Jim Blaney. JB waiting for the coach to stop by. A very, very simple playbook for the Huskies in the first half. They didn't do anything unusual. They did have the one pass Brady through into the end zone. But other than that, it was just exactly what you would have expected from Northern being able to put points up against a team that has lost 40 of their last 41 in Indiana State. But uh, a team in the Sycamores obviously looking for a little success here today. You know, Jerry Kill and his staff, the team, the, uh, the whole athletic department, you have to be pretty pleased with this crowd here. Jim Blaney standing by, JB. All right, Tom, thank you very much. Coach, with as close as your guys came in the first two games, and I know there's 30 minutes left in this one, but the 30 minutes of the first half has to be very satisfying for everybody in this program. Well, you know, we're, we're certainly, you know, certainly scoring some points and doing some good things, but at the same time, you have to look at it from a coach's perspective. You can't turn the ball over, and we've had two crucial turnovers, one in the red zone and one right there at the half led to a field goal. So there's a lot of things we can talk about at halftime. And a lot of valuable coaching time coming up in the 30 minutes in the second half, correct? No question. We're going to coach hard for four quarters. There is no question about that. Jerry, thanks for your time. Good luck in the second half. All right, let's go back upstairs to Tom Dora. 31-3, Northern Illinois with the lead. Fatty's halftime show is coming up. Stick around. How about the Huskies in this first half? Brady there just finds his big fellas and follows them in. Touchdown. Air One Wireless. Let's get it on. 
looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. When you're a rock star, you get to party hard. Champagne and caviar, tricked out exotic cars. It's just how I thought it'd be, except the party's not for me. Because some punk opened a credit card with my ID. Free what? Free credit. Report.com. That's the site I'm going to hit when I go home. They know how credit works. They send email alerts. Now I'm finding out how bad reality hurts. Offer applies with enrollment in Triple Advantage. Every night, there's just one place to be. The best damn sports show, period. Come on in and be our guest for Sports Television's Nightly Party. Ladies and gentlemen. The world's greatest late night sports show is just getting started. The best damn sports show, period. Weeknights on Comcast Sportsnet. We watch the game from our couches at home. Chicago sports fans are the breed of their own. We're there for the first game, we're there at the end. Comcast Sportsnet is a fan's best friend. With more Cubs and White Sox games than anyone else, and every one of them in high definition, Comcast Sportsnet is the best choice for Chicago baseball this summer. Comcast Sportsnet is a fan's best friend. Welcome back to DeKalb. This is the Fatties Pub and Grill Halftime Report. Northern Illinois leading Indiana State 31-0 at the half. I'm Jim Blaney, and joining me at halftime is Carol Owens, the head basketball coach for the women's basketball program here at Northern Illinois. Carol, you have the advantage of you played here and you coach here. You're really bringing the program back to the level that it's been for so many years, especially when you were playing here. Well, that's that's what we were trying to do, and I think we're on the right track. Um, we're getting more experience, some, some good talent, especially from the city, and, and we're really looking forward to the season. You bring up talent from the city. Sarah Rogers, who was a part of a marvelous basketball team at Marshall last year that won a championship, is going to be playing for you. What will she bring to your team? Well, I think, you know, as a freshman, the first thing is you got to get adjusted and you got to kind of get acclimated. And we just want her to transi transition into the program. But, you know, she's a talent and she did a lot of great things for Marshall. So we're really looking forward and great, you know, love to have her. And, you know, she's just she's just a special young lady. One of the things that will be to her advantage is the fact that you have four seniors coming back for this team. As you work on increasing the profile of program, building a program into an even bigger winner, how nice is it to have four seniors on the team? It's great. Last year, we were a little inexperienced. We lost 85% of our scoring the previous season, losing Stephanie Raymond and three crucial uh, players that had graduated. Um, but now we're a little older, a little bit more experienced. If we can stay healthy, we'll be a pretty good team. Obviously, playing the games is only half of a coach's duty. Building the program and getting the next group of girls after that to come in is a big part of it as well. As you look for girls to come play in this program, what type of players and what kind of academic backgrounds are you looking for? Well, we're looking for student athletes that have that balance. Um, this is kind of our fourth year uh, team GPA over 3.0, and but we want to have that passion. You know, when I was a player, EC Hill was a player. We had that passion, and that's ma what that's what made us a really good team. We were ranked in the top 25. We were winning conference tournaments, and we want people that can compete. We want to be at that level every year. As you look around the Chicagoland area, there's so many fantastic high school girls basketball programs around. Is that your main area of focus is 
northern Illinois and then extending down farther into southern Illinois. Is that the main place you're looking for players? Absolutely. The Chicago area, we're only an hour away. So, you know, that has to be uh, a, a channel of focus that we have. And then in the Chicago area and in, in the whole state of Illinois, we feel like we have pretty good talent here in the state of Illinois that we don't have to go that far. And we get kids from other states, but our main focus is in our own state. Can you believe it's less than a month before you roll the basketballs out? Less than a month, but I'm excited. You know, our kids are working hard, conditioning, and, and we get to have them two hours a week. But I can't wait till October 17th comes. Carol, thank you for spending some time with us. Good luck for the coming season. Carol Owens, the women's head basketball coach here at Northern Illinois. We're at halftime here in DeKalb. 31-0, Northern Illinois leading Indiana State. Dave, Tom, and Bob are back after this timeout. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full service on and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. NIU fans, when you enter the Village Commons bookstore, you're entering Husky territory. VCB is the official site for NIU athletics. Featuring the new NIU logo on a wide range of hats, t-shirts, shorts, sweats, and NIU logo gifts and accessories. Whether you're a student, graduate, or a fan of NIU athletics, the Village Commons bookstore is your Husky headquarters. Visit us in DeKalb or call us toll free 800-700-4868 or on the web at www.vcbs.com. What factors should you consider when buying a luxury vehicle? Should you put MPG on top? What about resale or reliability? The truth is, when you fit all seven costs together, you'll see why the Lexus RX has the lowest cost of ownership in its class. See how your costs align at your Lexus dealer. Lease the 2009 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $449 a month for 36 months with $36.49 due at signing. Welcome back to DeKalb, 31-3, Northern Illinois with what you would call a comfortable lead over Indiana State on a beautiful, beautiful day here And NIU. Time for a Fatty's Pub and Grill halftime show. Fatty's the official pre- and post-game tailgate place of NIU football. And, um, yeah, it's a nice day, kind of golf shirt weather. Can't be the one made the call on the golf shirts, by the way. In case there's a problem with any of the bosses, it was David who made the call. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way I heard it. <laughs> hey, let's talk a little bit about the first half, though. I think, Cap, Northern has to be very happy offensively. They got a lot of different looks. They ran a little bit of the option, a little bit of throwing the ball, a little bit of running the ball, and they executed. Well, they did execute. I thought the game was... You know, put in command for Northern Illinois because their offensive line did a great job dominating the Indiana State front four. Indiana State hung in there, but they got worn down the big weight differential. You know, Bob and I were going over the charts earlier this morning. We're going, wow, look, this guy's 320, this guy's 310, and they're going up against guys that are, you know, 250 and 260. That wears on you, and I thought that was one of the big plays, plus turnovers. Yeah, that's big key, obviously, and Bob, defensively, a little bit of a sparkle there at the end for Indiana State, but for the most part, obviously, when you've only got three points, the uh, Northern Illinois defense has been very good. They really have. They've come out to play. They're very sound fundamentally. They tackle very well. They keep the football inside and in front of the defense. And if, and if you could keep the football inside and in front, 
and you have that type of discipline, you've got a chance to be a pretty good defense. And they get a great push up front. This young English kid, I mean, he is something special. All those guys right across the board, they've done a great job. My hat is off to Coach Kill coming off of two really, really tough defeats up at Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, yeah. A loose both football games by a total of seven points. You know, you, can, you know, I always said football's more difficult to coach from the shoulders up than it is from the shoulders down. But he and his staff have done a magnificent job. From the Indiana State standpoint, I mean, you just, you're just you looking for something. Trent Miles, find a way to get us on the board. You're going through two and a half games of football right now without a touchdown. That's tough. Again, this is where the mental aspect becomes critical. This is where football coaching, from the psychological standpoint, is where you start to earn your money. Yeah, there's no question. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. And uh, predictably, guys, a lot of red is what you're going to see here. Yeah, a ton of red. They ran the ball well, but here's one of the first big plays of the game. They blocked the punt. I mean, they smother the punt, and then Northern Illinois able to take it down and score. They got really good penetration with their running game, real good depth to their offense. And then when Dan Nicholson had to step up and make a throw, he did just that off play action. Going to step up, throw it to that box in the back corner of the end zone, find his man, and that is a touchdown. One of the things that I see with Northern Illinois right now, they're so well coached. They're in the right place at the right time. They step up right there. Look into the quarterback's eyes. Look into the quarterback's eyes. That's how you make interceptions. I see running backs that, that are blocking. I see wide receivers that are blocking. They are complete football players. And that is goes back to the, the coaching ability. And great play calling. Excellent mixing it up. Roll, roll out, option football, straight dives, handoffs, taking care of the football. As I said, David, choking your motor down, waiting for that next block, and then boom, taking the seam and getting into the end zone. And, and look at the rushing yards, Tom. I mean, just look at the set. 136 to 9. Ouch, that is a, that's a huge number. Passing yards, a little closer. And again, Indiana State there in the second quarter started to throw the ball pretty well. 68 yards for them. Turnovers, though, a big one, obviously, that interception. Uh, but uh, third down conversions, Indiana State 2 of 8. Northern Illinois has only had three third downs, and they're 1 of 3, and the time of possession about the same. That may be just a little bit of a deceiving uh, stat, though, eh, because Northern Illinois has obviously dominated every aspect of this thing. Right, they never have to get to the third yeah. down situation, <laughs> and they haven't had to throw the football as much, but when they've had to throw it, they've done it well, throwing for two touchdowns. And Bob's second half, are we going to see some of these same guys to start with and then start to see some of the depth? Yeah, I, I think right now Jerry Kill and his staff are talking about that. Okay, we're going we're gonna to come back with, with our starting lineup. Okay, but who's your number two guy? Who's your number three guy? What do you want him to do? What do you want to see from him? From an Indiana State standpoint, they're going to have to throw the football all over, all over the lot to get back into this football game. They can't run the football. If you can't run the football, play action passes are done. Now you've got the defensive linemen from Northern Illinois. They've got their ears back because they know they're going to throw the football, and that even adds to the, to the woes of, of the Sycamores. And, David, we all know what this is like when you haven't had a chance to play for a while and now all of a sudden you're saying I can see I'm going to get some time these some of these backups now are going to get significant time and an opportunity to show the coaches hey don't forget about me I can play which means they're going to look to make play so I don't think you're going to see Northern Illinois just kind of choke their motor down as our guy yeah. likes to say yeah. here these guys are going to come to play I think you'll see some good action in the second half all right we'll take a break second half is coming up stick around Northern Illinois in control here over the Sycamores of Indiana State. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. Imagine a place where you'll find a hammer for every nail, a blade for every saw, a bit for every drill, and a drill for every bit. Well, you can stop imagining because that place is real, people, and it's called Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Contractors and do-it-yourselfers know they can count on Blaine's for the best name brand tools and hardware at honest low prices. The Home Improvement Center at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Just imagine. Hey Husky fans, shop online for all the latest Husky merchandise at naubookstore.niu.edu. 
We carry the best brands, Gear, Jansport, Russell, Vantage, Zephyr, and more. Shop any of our three locations, the Home Student Center, the Convocation Center, and our newest location at the Barcima Alumni and Visitor Center. Open three hours before game time for every home game. For the best Husky gear selection and prices, stop by today or shop online at niubookstore.niu.edu. That's niubookstore.niu.edu. Every game, every score, every highlight. It's the final score. 30 minutes every night of the week. Bringing you all the action from the world of sports. It's the one show where serious sports fans go for serious sports highlights. The Final Score, presented by DirecTV, tonight on Comcast Sportsnet. School is back in session, and so are high school sports on Comcast Sportsnet. You won't need supplies with coverage like this, as High School Lights brings you previews. The staggering numbers are hard to believe. Interviews. It's been great. I think I get more out of it than they do, though and the latest scores in the Chicagoland area. Get ready, Windy City, to be blown away by the best high school sports program in Chicago. High School Lights, presented by Farmers Insurance, every Friday night at 10.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Welcome back to DeKalb, 31-3. Northern Illinois with the lead over Indiana State at halftime, down on the field. Jim Blaney standing by. JB's getting a little warm down there. You know what, Tom? It's a little toasty, but it's not too bad. But considering it's going to be about 20 degrees out here in a couple of months, we'll take it. I want to pick up on something Bob talked about in the first half. He was talking about the body language of the players. And over on the northern sideline, when the players come off the field, they sit down for a couple of seconds, get a drink. They're right back up. They're doing the thing that players love to do, get as close to the coach as you can so that he puts you back into the game. Meanwhile, for Indiana State, it's a much more slowly moving team. I have to be honest with you. I have a hard time remembering the last time I saw a domination like this by one team versus the other on any level of football. Indiana State, with the exception of the turnover and the field goal right at the end, really couldn't get anything going. The first thing the Indiana State coaches are going to have to do is convince their guys to take it one play in one series at a time, and they still can probably get something out of this game. Back to you. All right, JB, thank you. Time for our TCF scoreboard update. TCF Bank opened seven days. Central Michigan and Purdue, and how about Purdue? I heard that was a late touchdown to uh, hold off Central Michigan. Maryland big. Maryland may be coming back a little bit in football. 51-24, they get a win over Eastern Michigan. Akron all over Army. There's Husky. 22-3 is victory sitting right there. Akron. How about Missouri, number five, the Tigers now with a touchdown. Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin there on fire. 33-21, Missouri, the number five ranked Tigers in Columbia. Northwestern, I tell you, Ohio has proven to be a, a stubborn team against the Big Ten this year. Northwestern gets a win, but it was hard fought, 16-8 the final. Penn State looks terrific. Temple's getting better, and Penn State the number 16 team, and that's going to continue to improve. It looks like they get a big win. The pup sitting there ready for the second half of action here in DeKalb, where the Huskies have the 31 to 3 lead. It is a, it's good to be a student in Northern Illinois, Bob. There's no question about that. Spent two years here and had a wonderful time. Loved it here. Great proximity to Chicago, Chicago suburbs. A lot of great young guys that I had a chance to coach. That Tim Mac, Pat McAvoy's and Tim Griffin's. And, I mean, just great, great, great young men. Here's kickoff. Start the second half. A high, short kick. Brought down. Now that thing carried back into the end zone. And they will call fair catch and bring it out to their own 20-yard line. And, uh, Fellas, you got to think that uh, Indiana State's going to continue to throw this football. They want to put some points on the board. They have to. Uh, they are not going to be able to run the football. And the only way they're going to be able to run the football is if they can throw the football. Because then you guys get into the play action. They complement each other. You have to have balance. But when your back is to the wall the way they are right now, the, the key, the key to, the, to moving the football is consistency, patience, and take care of the football. Dowdell back in at quarterback. A high snap, fakes the give. Now comes around the left side. He's got a big hole, gets across the 25, out near the 30, very close to a first down. Craig Rush there. 
That was on a the stop. guy running for his job. Yeah. You know, the guy comes in and replaces him, looks okay, throwing the football, trying to move his club. Boy, he had a bounce in his step there. I'd stick with the option football. I'd go to totally to my option package if I was going to run the ball. You are not going to run the football into the heart of this Husky defense. Receivers spread all over Dowdell trying to get him out a little bit wider now steps back in the pocket throws that pass is deflected and it's incomplete. See, that's why I look from a play calling standpoint. You come out with the option, talk to football, get up field, fake the pitch. All of a sudden you've got the de defense is playing assignment football. Now you get into that throw right there and that's reaction football. Stick with it with the assignment. Force Northern Illinois not to pursue with their ears back. Force them to play assignment defense. That's how you'll give yourself a chance. That was nearly a backwards pass. Had yeah. it not been tipped. Not a backwards lateral, right? Correct. There's no such thing as a lateral. Okay. They'll go back into the shotgun now. Second down. Give goes off the left side. And over carrier, David Bryant there on the stop. You know, talk about patience from a play calling standpoint by the Sycamores. That is very difficult in a game like this. Very difficult. But as you mentioned, Tom, early on, one play at a time, one series at a time. That has to be the mentality. Play clock is not working. Third and eight now. Trip receivers go to the right side. Dowdell looking, sees a blitz possibly coming from the left side. It is coming from that side. He better get it away. Quick, he did, and nowhere to go. Absolutely swamped. Terrific pursuit by that Husky defense. Kobe Kramer caught it. Bryant and then a host of his buddies there to make the stop. Boy, you watch pressure. They are in his face. There's nothing he could do. And as soon as he finds his receiver, he squares his shoulders up, and he's got nearly 11 red shirts. You know, there's an old saying, defense is knowing where your help is at. They cupped him, one to his outside, one to his inside. In other words, they didn't commit, commit in one direction, both of them or the other, because he could have either bounced outside or bounced inside. You cup him, you keep that football inside and in front. Defense is knowing where your help is at. Use the other defenders to your advantage. Gabe Mullane on the punt, Turner and Brown back deep to receive. This will be Greg Turner, he makes a move. Comes around the 45, trying to get to midfield, and will be stopped Bond just shy of midfield. And Northern will have it first and 10, just about midfield. Clock stop 12:51 left here in the third. 31 to three, Northern with the lead. Needless to say, I mean, obviously, without being redundant, this is a huge, huge defensive stand for the Sycamores. They can't have Northern Illinois come out in their first possession of the second half and put the ball into the end zone. And as we mentioned, going out at the half, this is a tired, tired Sycamore defense that's been on the field so long. Nicholson gives a straight give, goes straight up the middle, maybe gets a yard or so. Ball carried by Justin Anderson. That's Anderson. the first carry I think we've seen out of Justin Anderson yeah. to a kid that they had high hopes for at the start of the year. Good push up front by the Indiana State defense. Great, great push. I talked about pad under pad, okay? And, and as you get tired, you have a tendency, as I mentioned before, to stand up. Force yourself to keep your pads underneath the offensive lineman's pad. That will give you a chance. Nicholson, another give. This time all kinds of room, and can they hang on with the shirt? And that ends it. That proves to be the difference. So all was there. But that was a nice give off that right side. Clayton just found that opening. Well, watch him hit the hole here. This is a guy that didn't get any run in the first half. Now he just bounces it outside, breaks that shirt tackle, and he's going to have a big gainer. He well, really did a good job right here, to squaring his shoulders to the line. Well, what you see with, with the offensive line, a bunch of guys that finish their blocks, they stay on their blocks. It's not a big bang, and they stay on their blocks. That's why he was able to get up into that uh, next level. Anderson, the junior out of Steinman, on another carry, gets down to about the 20 yard line. Quentin Scott, the middle linebacker, is there on the stop. Gain of about uh, four yards, make it second and six. What a great way to get number 21 pumped up. Yeah. Rip I'm off a couple runs and give him three consecutive carries. It's an interesting running style. You know, I, I want the football. Give me the football. Give me a shot. Give me a chance. I'll prove to you that. But I, 
to get it done. Looking to make a move, slip down there. Scott again on the stop. That time uh, tried to cut back and just couldn't quite hang on. Looked like he was a little tired hitting the hole. Little time right now for a little play action pass. It's been run, run. Sycamores respect the run, single, detach the football, throw it down for you. You got Montel Clanton now in, Anderson out. And you're right, I think that'd be a really good call. Britt Davis heads to the sideline, number seven. I think it'd be a real nice time. They'll play action like they got their first touchdown and then throw it to that back corner. Throw goes to the left side, not a lot of room there whatsoever. Scott, among others, as Marcus Perez makes the catch, but uh, It'll be fourth down. Well, good, good job here, Quentin Scott. 5'10", 195 pound inside linebacker. Great adjustment, great job of analyzing the play. He's seen it a couple of times. They've adjusted to it. Hacks off to the defensive coordinator and to the young guy that made the play. You have to make those adjustments, not only at the half, throughout the progress of the game. Mike Salerno on a 39 yard field goal and he has been very very good so far not just this game but this year snap back ball down and the kick on its way long and up, high enough and it's good from 39 yards Mike Salerno perfect so far 953 left in the third now 34 to 3 northern with the lead. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. left in the third quarter here in DeKalb. Northern Illinois with the lead 34 to 3 and they'll be kicking off Kobe Kramer and Reese Craig back deep to receive. Kick. Another great kick. This is deep into the end zone and Craig will not bring this one out. That is as good a kickoff, young guy, as I've seen in all of college football so far this year. What a luxury. Time for our drive summary. The University Plaza, it's where to live. Six plays, 29 yards, 2 minutes, 58 seconds, capped off by a 39-yard field goal. Dowdell again back in at quarterback. And do you think you go here third quarter Dowdell and then fourth quarter Schmitke, guys? I'd go with Dow Dowdell the rest of the way. I think he gives you the best opportunity to move the football because there's one play that you cannot defend against in practice, and it's called the broken play. Dowdell looking deep, throws, and it is just overthrown. See, look, that, looking for Ryan Patrick. That was a heck of a throw. He had his arm hit as he threw, and he got dragged to the ground, and that ball had some oomph on it. Oh, yeah. You know, you get an athletic quarterback that can also throw the football. This, he's the whole package. A lot of times we see an athletic quarterback say, well, maybe he can't throw the ball. That's not true. I've seen a lot of great athletic quarterbacks that can also throw the football. You can't put a young guy in a category. I think this young guy can do the total package as far as a quarterback goes. And the other thing I mentioned, try to defend, try to draw off the broken play in practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. You can't do it. Broken play, this guy takes advantage of it. Ball start. This, this is, this is, you can't have this. You can't have this. Now, now we'll talk about Dowdell. He is the quarterback. He's only a sophomore. He needs to take charge of that huddle, and he needs to lay the law down with, with, with these guys. Even the, the fifth-year seniors and all that. Hey, look, we can't have that. We, you know, and, and, and start to assume that leadership role and take take that position to a point where the coaches can't take it. Now that pushes them back to about their 15-yard line. 
Call it second and 15 right now. Dowdell. With a give coming along the right side. Look at the red shirt just waiting for him. And who makes the play down the field? Larry with Larry English. Yep. Now who would you expect? How about a broken thumb? Last week played the whole game with a broken thumb. They just taped it up. He said, I'm playing. Comes out today and says the same thing. They do surgery on Tuesday. He didn't care. Put a cast on it. I am playing. I will play. And there are guys that would have said, eh, it's Indiana State. We should win this game. I'll sit out this yeah, week. No, right. not going to happen. Uh, hats off to defensive coordinator Tracy Clays. Uh, Kansas State grad, 94. Great young guy. Great future in football. Outstanding defensive coordinator. Now Dell rolls, throws, and it is picked off. It was. Now we've got a flag down. No, they say incomplete. Incomplete, and the flag down. Looked like Alex Cooper. What's the pursuit of Larry English, but Alex Kuba says he had it. Watch this guy. You talk about pursuit. They're trying to ride him by. Nope. Look at the motor. Look at the motor. He never quits playing. Ooh, cross the face, face mask. That was a good call. That was a good call. Inadvertent as it may have seemed, that was a good call. Yep. You, you know, we're talking about Larry English. What the pro scouts are looking for from a defensive lineman, a defensive player, a down, what is his first step? How quick is that first step? Larry English's first step is blinding speed. Keeper comes along the left side. Got a pretty good block. Come to the football. Picked up by the Huskies. Picked up by Sobel, and he's down inside the 20-yard line. Dowdell lost it. Sobel right there to pick it up. And the Huskies are knocking on the door again. How did he lose it? You watch the play. I don't know how it came loose. Trying to make something happen. Trying to make something happen. That's what happened. You get in a situation, your back is to the wall, okay? Takes off with the football. Put it away, young man. Put it away. Get both hands on the ball. I mean, that's just a good defensive play, stripping the football. But at the same time, when you, when, again, you're in a situation where you're going to try to make something happen and start to take chances, but you still have to take care of the football. I think it was David Bryant, number four, David Bryant, who got his hand in there, and you got to tuck the football away to ball secure. Justin Anderson with the carry inside the 10. He's down near the six yard line. McCluskey there on the stop. And it'll be second and goal. Boy, Anderson just follows those big fellas. Smart thing to do, huh, guys? Big guys open up a little hole, and you are going to go right behind them. Now, excellent point. Excellent point. And uh, you got, you know, David, I know, and, and Tom, you'll probably jump on uh, the, uh, the Kaplan bandwagon of, of uh, getting some humor out of this. At times, you have to choke your motor down. You have to take those little scissor steps and then jump to the inside, jump to the outside. Timeout called by Northern. We'll take it with them. 7.39 left in the third. 34-3. Huskies are rolling. Air One Wireless. Let's get it. Looking for a wireless phone and service? With 15 locations to serve you, Air One Wireless is a leader in Sprint phone sales and service. Our experienced staff can help find the right phone and plan for your needs. And we're always there to support our customers after the sale. I'm Hunter Hillenmeyer of the Chicago Bears. For service after the sack, go to Air One Wireless. In Joliet at Essington and Caton Farm Roads, plus locations in Morris, Diamond, Lockport, and Plainfield. What do you want? What do you say about? Peace. Justice. Equality. Truth. Accountability. Equal opportunity. A healthy economy. A healthy environment. Education. Civil rights. Human rights. Freedom. Our honor. Our country. The American dream. Voice your vote. Voice your vote. Voice your vote. One vote. One chance. Register today. One vote. One chance. Sports Night with Pat Boyle and Mark Chanelski. Every weeknight at 6.30 and 10, only on Comcast Sportsnet. The best highlights in Chicago. That ball hit deep. You can put it on the board. Yes! Back to left field for Ramirez, and it will go! The most in-depth interview. We like the way we're playing, and hopefully things just keep getting better. Pat Boyle and Mark Chanelski have you covered. 
you don't want to miss Sports Night. Make your plans to join us nightly on Comcast Sports Night. Demarcus Grady now in at quarterback, the freshman who threw a touchdown pass. It is only passed so far this year. Handoff, Clinton goes along the right side, right down to the end zone. The Husky big fellas wanted a touchdown call, but they said not quite. Nicky skidded into the end zone. Big offensive linemen love to run block. Look at the push right there. Good job, good lean, he's down. Good call by the official. They want to run block. They, want to, they don't want to sit back there and pass block. They want to run block. That was Eddie Adamski, number 50, the big center. Very mobile, the guy down the field. Trying to guide him into the end zone. Third and goal, football at the one yard line. Looking along the right side and he is in for the touchdown. Montel Clanton almost untouched, came around that right side. That big offensive line, again, did a terrific job paving the road. This is about as easy as it gets. Just get a hat on a hat. Give me a little crease. Ooh, look nice at my block. fullback, Gabby. Nice look at my block. fullback, Tommy. Your fullback, fullback did a great job there. Kyle Scarb. Kyle Scarb gets get. I'm giving him the Camel Award after this is over. Kyle Scarb, <laughs> fullback, 6'2", 200. Bet that'll go on his resume. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He'll value that. He'll treasure that. Salerno, the extra point is good. It's being it's being engraved as we speak. 41 to three. Northern Illinois with the lead after another very impressive drive using both quarterbacks going back and forth. Our drive summary three plays 10 yards a minute 28 and Clinton with that one yard run brought to you by the University Plaza. It's where to live. Jim Blaney standing by JB. All right Tom as we all know that uh, Saturdays in the fall is only part of the story of any college football program recruiting is a big part of it as well. And the quarterback situation is starting to set up nicely for Northern Illinois for a lot of years. Of course, Nicholson is a senior, and then you have Grady, who's a redshirt freshman. Jordan Lynch of Mount Carmel, who's a senior in high school this year, he's committed to come to Northern Illinois next year. I had the pleasure of seeing Lynch play last night. He's an option quarterback with good size, and I have to admit, after watching him play last night, he throws the ball a lot better than he's given credit for. So Jerry Kill, let's say, for example, he redshirts Lynch next year. He has a nice pipeline of quarterbacks coming through here in the future. Back to you. High end over end kick. Craig is going to take this about five yards deep. And again, Kramer walks over and says, forget it. Don't bring that baby out. You get killed. You, know, you mentioned Mount Carmel High School. Young guy committed already to Northern Illinois. Mount Carmel High School under head coach Frank Lenti may be one of the best high school football programs, not only in the city, not only in the state, but in the entire country. Frank Lenti has done a magnificent job at Mount Carmel. Oh, God. You get a Mount Carmel kid, you're going to get a quality kid. And that's the same school that he produced Donovan McNabb, yeah. among others. Yeah. yeah, among others. That's a good that point, school. Cap. Dowdell back in at quarterback. Give goes straight up the middle, makes a move, gets across the 24 to about the 25-yard line. Good chunk of five yards there, TD. I mean, did a nice job turning it upfield. I get into a little bit of an option mode here. Come on, Indiana State. I want to see them get in the end zone. You work so hard in practice all yeah, week. Yeah. You want yeah. to be able to hang your hat and say we did get in the end zone. I bet those kids will be ecstatic if they're able to get in. Second and five from the 25. Antoine Brown, by the way, on that last carry. Dowdell fades back, looking, throws left side. First down, caught. Good catch, good throw. And there with this reception, and that's a first down for the Sycamores. Look at that Northern Illinois bench, and I'll, I didn't get to play today. I think I'll get in today. Start walking over towards your position coach a little bit. You know, if he's in the booth, now you go over to, toward the guy with the headset, you know, kind of. Hey, 24 is ready to go. <laughs> yeah. Or whatever number. If you get a game, this game continues. One of the things you'd like to see is get, get some of those older guys in the game that really haven't had a chance to play. Whoops. Nowhere there. Absolutely nowhere to go. Yep, he wow. read that very well. Out of Nina, Wisconsin, and he just blew that play up. 
Bob, you made a point earlier about how many guys Indiana State brought. Just pure guys. Not talking about scholarship athletes. Bodies on the sideline with a uniform. I counted 34 or 35. I mean, usually you travel 60 or 65 guys. It's 34 or 35 guys. That, that is a, a relatively small amount to travel. Yeah. Yeah. Trip receivers to the right side. Dowdell fades back. Looks left. Throws that way. And there's nothing there. There were red shirts waiting for that. That was like a piranha group waiting for the fish to come around the corner. Four minutes, 59 seconds left. Third quarter here in DeKalb. 41 to 3. The Huskies have done it on the ground. They've done it in the air. They've done it with special teams. They have been terrific. Along with Dave Captain, Kaplan and Bob Kamel. I'm Tom Dore. Glad you're with us. It is just an absolutely perfect day here in DeKalb, guys. It's gorgeous. Great weather. crowd, too, by the way. Absolutely. It's always like this at the Cal. Cappy, don't you remember that? It was when we were <laughs> all, always. This. Bob was an assistant football when I was assistant basketball. It was really 75 and sunny year round here. Wow. Trip receivers to the right side. Down, down. Now going to break throws. He's got a man wide open across the 45 out to midfield. And that's a first down. Brian Kent there with the catch, and that's a big first down. Watch him scramble and just let everything develop. This is a real nice play by Dowdell. He's going to look. He gets flushed. He's going to come up, step up, and then make the throw. Nice game. Well, the, the quick release, he has an unbelievably quick release. Now he sets. He looks. Now he starts to scramble. Remember I talked about a broken play? Sing. Ball very seldom. Just comes back just a little bit, shoots out of his hand. I really like this kid. I, I really, really like him. Little pass fake. Now rolls out to the right side. Looking long. Throwing long. Looking for the open man. And it's picked off. I still like He him. hung it up yeah. there to dry. Had a throwing. man there under throwing exactly a little bit. And the Huskies will take it away. Well, he had a guy open. A guy had a step. But way too much air under the football. And he was under throw. Patrick George there makes the interception and he read that very well guys give Patrick George a lot of credit you know you talked about the high point catching the ball at the high point what that means is you're going to get up as high as you can and that's where you want the timing to be to either catch the football or make an interception in that case right there this is what a secondary coach is telling a, a, a defender the football's in the air you are now a wide receiver nice play good read and uh, Again, you're talking about Dowdell. He, he, he's in a tough spot right here. He's trying to make some things happen, and, and it's difficult. But I do like this kid. If I'm the Sycamore coaching staff, I'm going to build my offense around Chuck Dowdell. There's no doubt in my mind. DeMarcus Grady is back in at quarterback, and he's going to give this ball off. And he's got a lot of room coming around that left side of the offensive line. Well, in your open, you said today could be a big day for the Huskies and a big day for the Cubs. The Huskies are having a big day. The Cubs are up 5-0. Oh, how about that? With a magic number of one, the Cubs looking to close out that National League Central. Cap, you know this as well as I do. Lou Pinella does not have a bigger fan, a bigger fan than Bob Camel. I absolutely love the guy. Oh, he's phenomenal. I love the guy. Second down and nine after the yard game by Ricky Kreider. Brady looks over the defense, now steps back in the pocket looking to throw. Didn't find anybody, now rolls out, comes across the 10, gets out to about the 13 yard line. This is where the Sycamore defense, you have the ball inside Northern Illinois' red zone. Tackle the football, strip the football, pull the football out. First guy comes in, wraps him up. Next guy comes in, bam, yank that football out of there. Third and three now. Clock running, coming up on two minutes left here in the third quarter. Third down and three for the Huskies. Receivers split to both sides. Brady waits. Gets it, looks, now rolls out to the right side, steps up and got tripped up and did not quite get the first down. And a little fake to the left side and then rolled out to the right. And you can see he's a lot more comfortable running that ball, guys. That's what he is. He's a running quarterback. He'll throw when he has to, but he brings great quickness and athleticism. And got tripped up in there and they get caught up in the wash, Bobby. 
Well, one of the things from a defensive standpoint when you're to play Northern Illinois, the one thing Coach Kill has to worry about, what quarterback do you use when, and you start to create a, a tendency by the use of one quarterback as opposed to another one. And that's where self-scouting comes in, where you scout yourself to make sure that you're not putting that type of a fingerprint on, on your offense. First and punt of the day. Yeah, uh, for Andy Dittmanner. How about that? The senior from Northern. Bloomington. And didn't quite get a chance to send it off. We're a little late action after the whistle sounded. Now the official calls the two players over and says, look, it's 41 to 3. <laughs> Will you knock it if it's if it's seven to seven or so, ten to seven? You can see forty-one to three. There's a, the Cubs, Cubs fan. Cub fan with the Northern Illinois hat. Good to go. Cub fan, Husky man. Snap back this time. A very haul. Oh, what a great punt! Wow. Kramer calls for the fair catch and makes the play at his own forty-four yard line. A terrific punt by Ditman. 49 seconds left in the third, 41-3, Northern Illinois in. Don't miss a thing life has to offer. The Hauser Ross Eye Institute offers a number of options to help you see better. LASIK is just one of a number of choices from Hauser Ross. New lens technology can help you see near, far, and everything in between. Beyond contacts, beyond LASIK, new lens technology offers an exciting choice in vision correction. Leave it to the experienced doctors of Hauser Ross to have the best choices for your vision. See all that life has to offer at the Hauser Ross Eye Institute in Sycamore. Welcome back to DeKalb 41-3, Northern Illinois, as Indiana State will take over. Calvin Schmidtke is back in at quarterback. The freshman had some success in the second quarter. There he is. Now he's going to keep it and not going to get very far. That he maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. This experiment is not going to work. No, if you're going to run it, keep Dowdell in there. Exactly. You know, David, you talked about, and, and Tom alluded to the Cubs, and uh, my two dreams this year for the Chicago Cubs would be number one, win the World Series. Number two, present Ron Santo with his Hall of Fame plaque after the seventh game. Wouldn't that be great? That would yeah. be that would be unbelievable. That'll take us to the end of the third quarter. 41-3 again, Northern Illinois with the lead. It'll be second and ten when we come back. 41 to 3. The Huskies get a great ovation from a good crowd here. And the Huskies will look to close this one out in the fourth quarter when we come back. Husky fans, Fatty's Pub and Grill in DeKalb is your official pre- and post-game NIU football headquarters. Whether you're catching a game on our big screens or having some of our famous grilled food out in our beer garden, Fatty's is the place to be. Reserve your date for your holiday party at Fatty's. And if you're looking for catering for your next event, Fatty's also offers full service on and off-site catering. For more information, go to fattyspub.com or call 815-758-7737. Bob Rohrman equals savings squared. Deep discounts, low APR financing. Bob Rohrman's Arlington Chrysler Jeep and Dodge in Buffalo Grove. 28 MPG Jeep Compass, 15,777. Brand new Dodge Grand Caravan, 15,755. Bob Rohrman. You owe it to yourself. Bob Rohrman's Arlington Chrysler Jeep and Dodge in Buffalo Grove, just one mile east of Route 53 on Dundee Road. 
This has been a magical season for the Cubs. To commemorate this historic season, Big Time Bats has just released the Ace of Cubs 2008 officially licensed photo bat. This bat is numbered and production is limited to 2008 bats. Previous Cubs photo bats have sold out, so don't be disappointed. This bat has a 360 degree image of the four Cubs pitching stars around the Cubs logo and the words Ace of Cubs. The player's facsimile signatures are also included. You can purchase this historic bat for $129.95 plus shipping by calling Big Time Bats at 1-866-280-BATS. Welcome back. We are in DeKalb here, Brigham Field at Husky Stadium. I'm David Kaplan, and we are joined by the brand new athletic director here at NIU, Jeff Comfer. And you've got to feel good. You guys had two great shots for victories, and they wriggled off the hook. But today, your Huskies come out and played really well. They really have. And it's, it's great to be at home and to get that first victory at home, you know, barring any unforeseen <laughs> tragedy this, this quarter. But uh, I think it's safe in hand, and uh, we're playing great today. It's, it's good to see the team. And what a great crowd we had here, too, today. Dave. Unbelievable. We looked there big time. Great hit we get right here. I mean, your guys are flying to the football today. It's thrilling, this capacity crowd. It was packed in here early. And we looked at it and said, wow, that really says a lot about Husky football. It really does. I think with our new coaching staff and with the excitement that we've had those first two games, people are about ready to get this team rolling. And today, they showed what they could do. You take over here as the associate vice president and director of athletics. When you look at the facilities, everything has been upgraded here at Northern Illinois. You have the Yorton Center, which is just a huge addition to the athletic department. What are some of the other things on your agenda that you say, you know what, I want to do this better? Well, you know, one of the things that, um, speaking of the Jordan Center, today's the one-year anniversary of that facility, and had a chance to speak to about 20 recruits and their families in there today. And for, to have that facility and to be able to show off our university with that facility is really special, and it's going to do nothing but help our program. Some of the other things that we want to do better are obviously put a better product on the field, and I think we're well on our way there with this coaching staff and with this football team, but all of our teams, in fact, maybe you've talked about it already, but what our soccer team did yesterday was truly outstanding. Beating SMU, uh, the number two team in the country, uh, yesterday was a real credit to Steve Simmons in that, in that uh, soccer team. And Indiana State, a short game through the air. Your red shirts have done a great job at flocking to the football, but you've been at some big time institutions of higher learning. Have you seen a better guy than Larry English on the defensive line? This guy's unbelievable. I told Coach Kill yesterday he would be all Pac-10, because I came from Washington. He'd be all Pac-10, he'd be all SEC, and he'd be all ACC. Those are the, the three uh, BCS conferences I've, I've worked through, and he would, he would definitely be all league for all of those leagues. And he's also a quality student. And he's a student. local kid, so I mean, it's all the things that you want to sell to a recruit, he's got. Well, that's the thing. We've got eight guys in the NFL this year. He'll probably be the next. Um, we've got such a, a, a great tradition here with putting kids into the next level through the to the NFL that he'll just be the next person to do that. But what he is and what he means to our program, the MAC Player of the Year last year, it's a real credit to how hard he, he's a hard worker and a good person. A place, and we're talking with Jeff Comfer, the athletic director at Northern Illinois. A place like the Jordan Center, as Indiana State has the ball on a third and five at the 36. We're in the fourth quarter with Northern Illinois, leading 41-3. A place like the Jordan Center, the first time I went on a tour, I honest to God stopped and said to your predecessor, are we at the University of Nebraska? Because this place is unbelievable. What an advantage that is in recruiting. It is, and you know, just with the 20 kids I talked to today, I said, you gotta find out wherever you're gonna go, and hopefully it's Northern, is there a commitment? And I said, you're sitting in the commitment here. You're sitting in the kind of facility that you will find at some of the finest universities across the country, because I've been there and I've seen them. You're exactly right, Dave. Fourth and five, so Indiana State down 41 to three. Really no choice, has to go for it, and that will be an incomplete pass. It will be a turnover on downs, and Northern Illinois will take over. Talk a little more about the soccer win. We just discussed that, but that's a huge shot in the arm for the school as well. Well, it is. I mean, when you can beat the number two team in the country, and I love our quote from our head coach who said, we don't schedule those games to lose, we schedule them to win. And so, and he did that yesterday. We got number 14, Tulsa, tomorrow. If we can do that, you'll see the Huskies in the top 15 in the country, uh, for sure, for men's soccer. 
if you take us back to some of your previous lives when you were mentioned in the BCS schools, some of those schools look at a place like Northern Illinois and go, I don't think we want you on the schedule because you look at the commitment from the facilities, you look at past performance, and to them, they don't want to come into a decal. How tough does that make it the schedule? Well, it, it makes it tough because of exactly what you're talking about. They don't want to. They don't want to lose coming in here. But they also they also want to make sure that they have some good quality home games too, and we can provide that for them. So our job down the road is to schedule appropriately so we can get some big time teams to come here, but also schedule for postseason for us so that the, our biggest objective is to win our conference. Now, if you can keep the weather like this year round in DeKalb, wow. Yeah, that, that would be nice. I'm not taking responsibility, but I'll take credit for it. What a weather. It's a beautiful day. Spectacular day today. Huskies have done a real good job, too, at running the football. Today, today they've, yeah, they've really controlled the pace and the tempo of this game, and uh, that's a credit to the game plan that we came coming in. I, I thought we would run it well, and that's really been true to form. A little bit about Jerry Kill. He's brand new head football coach here. Joe Novak retires. Jerry comes up from Southern Illinois, and he brings a new energy to the program. Joe did a great job while he was here. He is a very energetic coach. He's a very positive guy. He's a can-do guy. He's a want-to guy. And so being around him, his enthusiasm is very infectious. And uh, it's rubbed off on our team. There's a big one right here. There's a big run, and it's going to end up being another Northern Illinois touchdown. Chad Spann going to rumble to the end zone and make it 47-3. Jeff, thank you for being here with us, and welcome to the DeKalb community and the Husky family. Thank you so much, David. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, you all for the all you we'll do for us. We'll see you soon. Big touchdown run, Tom Dorr, for Northern Illinois to blow it open to 47-3. Well, you saw the offensive line again open up that big hole, and he just took advantage and flew right down to the end zone and put six more on the board for the Huskies. I have to give this gentleman some recognition, Matt Limegrover. Matt Limegrover is the offensive line coach for the Huskies, and this is a very technique-sound, aggressive offensive line. 12 minutes, 11 seconds left in what has turned out to be a big, big game for the Huskies. A 55-yard touchdown run by Chad Spann and Northern Illinois with 48 points. Here's something to celebrate. A new Applebee's neighborhood value. Endless favorites starting at $9.99. Choose from sweet and meaty riblets, panko-crusted shrimp, or golden delicious chicken tenders. Your choice, all you can eat, starting at $9.99. Be ashamed not to have a cold beer with that. It's an all-you-can-eat dinner, but you gotta hurry. Endless riblets, shrimp, or chicken tenders, starting at $9.99. Only at Applebee's. It's a whole new neighborhood. Hey, Mike! How's it going? What's that? My new toys. And the sweet protection plan I bought for them. It's all clear. Uh, there's an easier way to protect your stuff? Call GEICO. They can help insure all your vehicles. GEICO Power Sports. Insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Call GEICO. 48 to 3. Oh, I think you could have predicted a big Northern Illinois victory, but 48 to 3 has just been terrific. Our drive summary capped off by that 55 yard run. It was a 64 yard drive, three plays, a little less than a minute. It's been with a 55 yard run that's brought to you by University Plaza. It's where to live. I think any of us could have run that in 55 seconds. <laughs> maybe the whole drive 55 seconds. Maybe in a day. It would have been a clock killer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> uh, guys, satellite windows closing. Please yeah. get to the end zone. <laughs> Hammered as he tried to come across the 20 yard line. That's where Indiana State will have it, first and 10. Talk about running to the football. You use the term gunners. But look, they're in their lanes. They stay in their lanes. Good marking points. Now converge. Boom, bam. That's the guy that That's just ran for the touchdown. That's, That's the guy that sticks his nose back. He's going to earn a letter today. He has yeah, enough good time point. to get a good monogram point. today. You run for a touchdown, and you're one of the first guys down there in the kickoff. That's the guy that wants to play. That's Coach, I want to play. Exactly. I'm not just going to strut you, when you I get a score. In case you miss this, I still want to play. Exactly. 
Schmidke back in. First and ten. Give goes to the back. He'll come around the right side with nowhere to go. You know, the interesting point is as you start to put in your second and third team guys, there's no let up. It may be even more difficult because they have fresh legs. They want to show what they can do. They're going to be aggressive. They want to play. They want to do well. They want to get noticed. It's just a, it's just a, a tough, tough situation for the Sycamores of Indiana State to be in right now. I mean, 48, I'm 48, you want a touchdown would be. Yeah, one touchdown. One touchdown. Yeah. Give me something to, to talk about on the way home. Give goes, and again, absolutely nowhere to go. You know, Cap, you talk about our days here at Northern Illinois and some of the great young guys that we were around, but one of the guys that, to me, Gage Park High School in Chicago in the public league, which I don't think there is a Gage Park High School anymore. Clarence Bourne graduated oh, yeah, from here absolutely. and played in two Super Bowls for the Washington Redskins. Right, that's correct. Great, great kid. Great young guy. Hollis Thomas oh. played in the NFL for a long time. Third and 11 now. Schmidke fades back, looks, goes over the middle, and the pass is caught. And he'll get out to about the 31 or 32 yard line. Broadcast rights for this event have been granted to Comcast Sportsnet by Northern Illinois University. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the expressed written consent of Comcast Sportsnet and NIU is strictly prohibited. Well, fourth and eight. Gabe Mullane, the punter, has gotten a lot of work today. He's gotten a lot of work all season long. Nico Brown back deep to receive. Mullane waiting. They want to get as much time off this clock as they can. Here's the snap. And to kick a low line drive, Brown might be able to return this. Comes across the 45, cuts back, looking for another block. Cuts back again and gets down to about the Indiana State 45 yard line. Jim Blaney, we got a problem down in the field. What's up? Well, Tom, it may have been the most important offensive series of the game for Indiana State. I'm standing down here with my friends from the National Guard. This is Kid Andrew, Andrew Brewer. Now in front of us, Andrew, we only have four rounds left. We need one for the end of the game, and we have one in the chamber. Did I get the term right? Chamber? Yeah, yes, it's called the, or the breach on uh, artillery pieces. Okay, so the breach. I, I didn't get it quite right. But anyway, a quick, uh, you fired on safeties and touchdowns, right? Correct. So therefore, you guys had to be ready to go when Indiana State had the ball at the goal line. And if there had been a safety, there's a possibility we might have run out, right? Uh, correct. But with uh, 9.43 left, more than a little ways to go, you're, you're feeling safe now. Uh, we're feeling pretty safe. You never know, though. Hopefully, we get to fire some more rounds off for the game. I'm just curious. What do I push when I, when I want to fire it? Uh, to fire it off, we have to close that, and then they just pull back on the uh, lanyard right there. I think I'll let you guys handle when they score again, all right? All right, no problem. We hope to do it again. All of you, thank you for your service, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Back to you, Tom. I want to see Blaney pull it now. I want to see him fire the thing. Now, Blaney, you got me interested. I want Blaney as far from that thing as possible. Yeah. <laughs> or I want me as far from that thing as possible. If Blaney fires it. Come on. I, I, got, I got confidence in my boy, JB. DeMarcus Grady, the quarterback. Give goes along the left side. Big hole. That's enough for a first down and more. Inside the 30. Kreider gets down to... The mark forward progress down to about the 28 yard line. That's a first down for NIU. You know, we mentioned the Sycamores bringing basically 34, 35 people. You get into a game like this, if you're at home, you start to put some of your young guys in. That's not going to happen when you, when you travel. You have fewer players, yet only 34 or 35. So you're playing with a bunch of guys out there that have been on the field for a long, long time. Well, these defensive guys, it seems like they've been on the field almost all game. The only thing longer is going to be that bus ride home. Bates looks right side, pass is caught, and he'll kneel down right there. Brett Davis with the catch. Brett Davis was a quarterback when he came to Northern Illinois and ended up becoming a very solid player at wide receiver. Out of RB, Riverside Brookfield High School, ball down to 22 yard line, second down and about four here. He was considered coming out of high school a top three Mid American Conference recruit. 
great Riverside Brookfield High School, great football. He's on the leadership council for Coach Kill with the Players Leadership Council. Here's another guy, high school captain, sporting a 3.8 GPA. Second and four, man in motion comes to the right side. Give, and they're looking to run that side. Gets inside the 20, close to a first down. Justin Anderson again on the carry. I think he's going to be just shy. It'll bring up third and a short two. 3-8. Do you get to add both semesters together? I think I was a 3-8 then. I didn't well, add, add all year, my, maybe my sophomore and junior year together. Holy cow. But across the board. You know, you yeah, can get right, I mean, right. Joe Novak, I mean, character. You win with character. In the long run, character will prevail. You can't have a 3-8 and a 3-9 and a 4-0. And, and uh, you know, have many problems on your football team. Third and two. Give goes along the right side. Nice cut back to the inside, down inside the 10. Ricky Kreider with the carry, and that's yet another Husky first down. Boy, they are just piling up the yardage now. Oh, the Indiana yeah. State Sycamores just want to see that clock tick as fast as they can. You know, one of the things you talk about is vision. Great, when back has great vision, he has the ability to make that cutback. Watch here. Big eyes, zinc. Oh, there it is right there. Great cutback. Great job. You have to have great vision to be a great running back. See the whole field, great peripheral vision. And just get that sense of when to make that cut. Motion man comes along the right side, stops, goes back to the left. Fumble the football, and I think Indiana State got it. Yes, they do. DeMarcus Grady started to hand off and go the other way, and there was a little bit of a collision. He drops the ball. Big Nate Williams fell on it. We'll take a break. 628 left, 48 to 3. We'll show you this fumble one more time. Loose football, and there he is diving. We'll be right back. It's a 40th anniversary celebration at Casey's General Stores. All month, sign up to win free gas for an entire year. You could be a big winner just like Elizabeth Reed from Geneseo, Illinois. Casey's, it's all good. Tomorrow is a coaching duel as Ozzie Gian and his White Sox bully Trey Hillman and his Royals in KC. Coverage starts with Felco White Sox free game live. White Sox Royals in HD tomorrow at 12.30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friend. Every week, Bears Blitz is the show for you, the diehard Bears fan. Wednesdays, it's all about the offense, as Lovey Smith, Kyle Orton, and Ron Turner address the media. Thursdays, the defense has the mic as Lovey Smith, Bob Babbage, and Brian Urlacher talk X's and O's. Plus, Dan Jiggins tells you this week's keys to the game, and William Jackson has exclusive interviews from Hellas Hall. Bears Blitz, every Wednesday and Thursday at 4.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. Baseball fans and Comcast subscribers, Cubs and Sox games are now available on Comcast Sportsnet On Demand. Don't miss a second of your favorite team's games. Comcast cable subscribers just go to Digital Channel 999 and watch Cubs and Sox games on demand. Every Sunday at 10.30, go in-depth with your teams on Land Rover Sports Night. Sit-down interviews, extended news from the locker room, and everything you need to know beyond the box score. Sports Night in-depth every Sunday night at 10.30, only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. Six minutes, 28 seconds left, 48 to three. Northern Illinois has just been terrific on both sides of the football today. Calvin Schmitke, the quarterback, with a give right up the middle and no place to run, no place to hide. DJ Prickle there with the stop. Wow, had nowhere, absolutely nowhere to go, guys. I mean, look at the push. That is just wearing down an offensive line. And if somehow he'd have missed him, there were three other guys right behind no him question. doing the same thing. No question. Textbook. Textbook. Great leverage. Pad under pad. Square the shoulders up. Make the tackle. Tackle through the ball carrier, not to him. A well coached football. Yep. Second and 14. Schmitke back in the shotgun. Rolls out throws. Pass is caught. And the catch made at the 11-yard line. Jermaine Gray with the grab. Gets him back to just shy of the original line of scrimmage, so it's now third and about 11. There's just nothing there for Indiana State. I mean, there's not, you, you can't find much of any weakness right now comparing these two teams 
with Northern. No, it's been a total dominance. Total. Coming up on five minutes left. Schmidtke will fade back one step. Now rolls out of the pocket, looking up the field. Throws on the run, and this one was almost picked off. That would have been a spectacular we're catch. Have roughing the quarterback. Spencer Williamson had a hand on it, but we do have a roughing the passer. Bobby, you look good in hair like that. I have that. I actually have that. Uh, I've worn that from time to time. Take your wife out to dinner and that. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Almost made that catch. But they did hit the quarterback late. Yeah. They'll get trip receivers, go to the right side. Mickey fades. Now a quarterback keeper. He'll make a move, get out to about the 30 or 31 yard line before he's brought down. Pat Schiller there on the stop. You know, Cap, I uh, heard you comment about my haircut and that I would wear that type of haircut. You know, you're quite the man right now at Armando's Barbershop in South Bend. I mean, I've got requests for pictures, all kinds of things. I don't know what you did with those guys. At that. Well, there they are. There they are. How about being a fan? Isn't that great? Great afternoon. Isn't that awesome? It is. It really is awesome. Spend time with the family. Come out and see some Mid-American football at Husky it's Stadium. It's thin as my hair is on top, maybe I ought to get one of those. <laughs> Schmidtke now rolling, trying to buy some time, and throws that one away. He was looking for a receiver, saw all kinds of red, and thought, let's not throw this one into one of their hands. I'm going to throw it away and try and live to fight one more down. Well, you know, when you think of the proximity of DeKalb, Northern Law University to the Chicago area, for, for the entertainment dollar, this is this is a bargain. And it's... It, it, Husky Stadium is clean. It's well patrolled. I mean, it's it's a, it'd be a marvelous, marvelous venue for a family to come out and be in a more affordable type of college atmosphere and enjoy the afternoon. Third and four. Schmidtke looks, throws left side, passes caught, first down and more. And the official threw his hat. The made by Dallas Jones. Tackle made by Brown. Notice none of the players picked it up. Yeah, exactly. I thought one of the guys was hey, going to step on it. Hey, give me my hat back. Yeah, he's going to step on his hat. Give me my hat back. What? I don't have it. <laughs> Saw it. Wear it to a party tonight on campus. Where'd yeah. you get that hat? I stole it from the official. <laughs> Schmidtke. Hand off and wow. Absolutely swarm. Brandon Weiss, Lions Township, among others, right there on the stop. Running the ball hadn't been very successful here. No. You know, one of the things I thought that Joe Novak and his staff did really well from a recruiting standpoint remains somewhat provincial for the base of your football team. The greater Chicago area, up into Wisconsin, you know, into, into Indiana, into Iowa, Minnesota, and that. But again, fairly provincial. You get a great player here or there who has an interest, and you bring them in from a great distance. I think that's a recruiting uh, philosophy that uh, just will pay dividends uh, for Coach Kill also. Smith, he found his man open at about the 44-yard line. Got a catch. Brian Kent. Kent with the catch, and Schmidtke now starting to get a little bit of rhythm, but uh, not a lot of pressure on him. I think Northern is saying, you can have those three, four-yard completions. Just don't look downfield, because we'll find you. Again, uh, Trent Miles, I mean, he's going to have his work cut out for him to take this football team back all the way back home, meet with them tomorrow, meet with them the next day, and possibly have gone through three games without a touchdown. That is when the cycle, that's where you have to have senior leadership, and you have to have leadership by the assistant coaches at every position. A little dump pass and trying for a couple extra yards. Greg there and Patrick George on the stop, and he got very close to a first down. Let's see where they'll mark forward progress. They bring him back to about the 47 yard line of Indiana State. So it's fourth down and I don't think they're going to punt. I wouldn't punt here now. I, I, that would be the wrong message sending to your yeah. send the wrong message to your football team. Talk about the psychological aspect. You know, no quit, no quit. We're going to play right down to the, to the final tick. 
And that clock you can see just above Schmidtke's head who winding down fourth and five Indiana State looking for a first down and their first touchdown of the year steps up rolls out of the pocket looking looking throws and it's incomplete yep. trying to force something but he was just about to get wrapped up minute 25 left Northern will take over on downs first and 10 48 three Huskies in control fresh at Jewel Osco, it's what we're all about. It started with an idea to offer the finest meat, seafood, produce, and baked goods around. And even though we've been serving Chicago for over 100 years, we never stop looking for new ways to improve. So whatever you're in the market for, you can always find it here, fresh to your family, from Jewel Osco. Advance your career with an MBA from Northern Illinois University. I was able to balance my MBA with my professional life as well as my personal life. And best of all, NIU's MBA program is AACSB accredited and affordable. I was impressed with the knowledge and experience of the professors, and the program provided me with a well-rounded business education. The affordability and convenient locations made my decision easy, and it made my MBA a reality. Designed for the working professional, the MBA program at Northern Illinois University. Jumpstart your career today. 48 to 3. It's been all Northern Illinois this afternoon here at the Cal. A minute 25 left. And Ryan Morris in at quarterback with a throw. Pass is complete along the right side. Adonis with the catch now makes a cutback. He's still going at the 35 and finally driven down at about the 30 yard line. He doesn't want to hear that this thing's over, that we're not looking to score. He says, I'm. I get a chance to run and play. I'm going to take that opportunity, guys. Well, what a great effort out of Evans Adonis. He's going to take this thing all the way to the sideline. That's about as close as you can go without going out of bounds. And to go all the way back across and outrun everybody until somebody has the angle and rides him out of bounds. It's fundamentally about a 67-yard run. Yeah, exactly. Eight-yard gain, 67 yards it took to get. That was outstanding. Casey's post game show coming up next. Straight ahead give. Look out. He's still on his feet inside the 30. And had the big carry early on the carry. 25 seconds left. And that ought to do it. Play clock under that. And that will do it. Northern Illinois with a strong performance. 48 to 3. NIU just dominated this on both sides of the ball. Casey's post game show is coming up. We'll have highlights and interviews. 48 to 3, Northern with domination over Indiana State. We'll take a break and come right back. Stick around. Everyone has a special talent or aptitude. At NIU, world-class faculty work closely with each and every student to help them identify and develop their own unique skills. NIU students participate in groundbreaking research, get hands-on work experience, explore their ambitions, and find their niche. It's the hallmark of an educational experience that is second to none. Discover your genius at NIU. This broadcast of Northern Illinois Husky football is brought to you by Fanny's Pub and Grill, the official tailgate home of NIU Athletics. Village Commons Bookstore. For all your Husky clothing and souvenirs, visit vcbs.com. Applebee's. Try Applebee's car side to go. You call it in, we bring it out. Casey's General Stores, the official convenience store of NIU Athletics. Casey's a convenience store and a whole lot more. Plains Farm and Fleet. I found it at Farm and Fleet. Jewel, we take one stop shopping to the next level. TCF Bank, open seven days. The University Plaza, it's where to live. The NIU MBA program, take the NIU MBA challenge. Kishwaukee Hospital, help heart home. And Resource Bank, where banking is a pleasure. 
48 to three Northern with the win. Jim Blaney standing by JB. And our Adidas player of the game, Adidas the official supplier of Husky Athletics, Montel Clanton. Montel, I want to talk about the first two games of the season for a second because you guys came so close. You were in those football games, had a chance to win. It has to feel good to come out here today and really put on a performance where it's A pluses across the board. Yes, it, it does really feel good. Uh, the offensive line did their job and it was making holes up front. And our running back to the our running back group, we did good as a whole. So it was a good, a really good job by everybody on the team. Everybody was mentally focused and was in the game. And we just came out and played hard. Do me a favor, get specific on the touchdown runs. Tell me what you saw, tell me how they developed, and how me tell me how you put it in the end zone. Oh, we got a big offensive line, and they developed by the offensive line and opening up the hole. And my job is to see the hole and, and burst through it, so that's how, I, that's how I got the touchdown. Montel, congratulations on a fantastic game and a fantastic win. Also joining us after the game is head coach Jerry Kill. And Jerry, same thing I talked to Montel about. You, This team, coaches and players both, came so close in those first two games. Is today's win a testament to the fact that guys were able to stay focused, realize you're making progress, and go out and execute and get a win? Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think they understand where we're at, and, and you know, there's a lot of things we need to continue to get better at. But it's a it's a program with a new coach, and you know, this is our third game, and I see progress being made, and, and certainly with the quarterback situation, losing our starter right off the bat, and Danny not being full speed. I think they've done a good job, but we've got you know we got work to do yet. Talk about the things that you think are closest to being full speed at this point, because let's be realistic. You guys are really about a month into this right now, correct? Well, I think defensively we continue to get better, and we got a lot of takeaways today. I thought we played aggressive in the secondary and aggressive as a defensive football team. Maybe, you know, had a couple penalties that I, you know, that we got to get cleaned up. Offensively, we've got to quit turning the football over, and, and part of that is, and I'll take full blame for that. We're playing a lot of people right now and, and sorting through a lot of uh, situations with two different quarterbacks. Backs and, and we've got to get that cleaned up. Talk a little bit because I know coaches are always this way. If there's one thing that when you go home tonight you're going to keep thinking about, is it the turnovers? Yeah, you can't. Again, it's, it goes back to winning football games. Is, is defense right now? We're playing well enough. We just take care of the football. And the good things will happen. Jerry, thanks for your time. Congratulations on a huge win and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Tom, back to you. That's been our Casey's post game coaches comments Casey's general store the official convenience store of NIU athletics Casey's a convenience store and a whole lot more. Don't forget the next NIU game on Comcast Sportsnet will be Saturday October 11th live at three o'clock as the Huskies will battle the Miami Red Hawks for Bob Camell and David Kaplan I'm Tom Dore. thanks so much. Beautiful day here in DeKalb. 48 to 3. Northern Illinois accomplished a whole lot in this opener here in DeKalb. Oh, they ran the ball. They were special teams were terrific through it, and their defense was outstanding. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Comcast Sportsnet and Northern Illinois University. A beautiful afternoon here, and we want to say thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. When you're looking for a luxury vehicle, is this all you see? How about now? What about now? Most people will consider two or three of these. But when you look at all seven costs, you'll see why the Lexus ES has the lowest cost of ownership in its class. For a clearer picture, visit your Lexus dealer. Lease the 2008 ES350 for 409 a month for 36 months with 3609 due at signing. Baby. We love it Are you ready for a good shopping experience? Hi, I'm Mike Abt with Abt Electronics and Appliances. Since 1936, our goal has been our customers' complete satisfaction. Whether you're replacing a TV or a refrigerator, building a dream kitchen or a home theater, our knowledgeable staff can assist you. Visit our website at abt.com to get one-year financing plus free shipping. Apt, pleasing people since 1936.
We now join our regularly scheduled program already in progress. I think it's going to be fun, you know, uh, Greece's a great player, uh, kind of like, seemed almost like an uncle, like Uncle Brian. And uh, it's going to be nice to get out there against the man. He's, you know, he's very smart, uh, runs the offense well, and uh, looked really good last week, so it's going to be a good challenge for us. Uncle Brian, I'm sure Gracie will like hearing that. Welcome back to Countdown to Kickoff presented by IPA. Dusty the Bears, welcome Brian Greasy, Uncle Brian and the Buccaneers to their home opener. Nate, you guys on defense certainly saw Brian over the last couple years. He knows your tendencies, so who has the advantage in this matchup? Uh, I think it would have to be a tie. Um, Brian Greasy, uh, the defense that Monty Kiffin runs over there in, in, in Tampa, they run the same defense that we run here. So it's not a whole lot that we can throw at him that he doesn't know, but I think it's going to be about execution and uh, who can get the most turnovers and try to make him uncomfortable in the pocket. Who, who do you give the edge to when you look at it? You know, this defense certainly knows what Brian's tendencies are and, and vice versa. You know, I give the athleticism edge to the Bears defense. I think when you look at what they can throw at you and the number of bodies they can throw at you to keep fresh, as fatigue sets into the Tampa Bay offense, look for the Bears' athleticism to take over. In Brian Greasy, he's very knowledgeable. He knows where to distribute the ball. He knows how to get rid of it. But you see here in the past, he, he is willing to throw up an interception, and he's not the most fleet of foot. So if there's a guy that can break an edge rush or maybe a blitz like you saw Mike Brown a couple times last week, he can get to the quarterback before the, the quarterback will be able to distribute the ball efficiently. Well, Greasy went 3-3 three and three in six games that he started for the Bears last season. The highlight was that last-minute game-winning drive in Philadelphia when he had no communication with the sideline. But Greasy says he wished there was more of that magic when he was at the helm of the Bears. Still, he cherishes his time in Chicago. I look back on with fondness on my time there and, and uh, the opportunity that they gave me to play. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't uh, get as, as good a result as we would have liked. And I didn't get as good a result as I would have liked. But, uh, but I don't look back uh, on, any, on, on, on that situation with anything but, uh, but fondness. Time you talked about it, he's not the, the most fleet of foot. He does make great decisions. So do you look for more blitzes? What do you do? You, you realize Ernest Graham is going to be, you know, the focal point of the offense. But what do you do to disrupt him? I think you have to speed up his decision-making process once the ball is snapped. But secondly, make him be an athlete. If Brian Greasy has to be the best athlete on that offense in order to keep it in motion, that's where the advantage is going to go to the Bears. Because I think um, Adewale Gunlia, Alex Brown, Mark Anderson, and Dusty Dvorak and the rest of the guys, they're as fast as Brian Greasy. So if they get him an open field chase, they can run him down. But again, it's going to make Brian uncomfortable in speeding up his decision-making. Lovey learned this Tampa 2 defense working under the Buccaneers longtime defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin. Tom, how similar are these defenses? I mean, they play the same style, but, but how similar well, are they? Uh, you know, I think the big word you want to hear about defenses right now is Tampa Bay cover two scheme. Right. And Monty Kiffin is a big instigator of the Tampa Bay cover two, and that's where Lovey has been raised in, in terms of NFL. When you look at pictures here, you can look at similarities in every time they, fa they get up and face the ball. But then again, how do you use the athletes you have at your disposal? I think the Bears have a younger, fresher, um, uh, 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 more in numbers as far as the front seven goes. So I think they can put different packages at the line of scrimmage. You know, you go to the Bears and you see the defenses they've been playing the last couple weeks. Everybody lined up at the line of scrimmage, forcing your offensive line and your running backs to be quicker, decisive blockers and making them be a better athletes at the line of scrimmage. But then Man Monty Kiffin will do the same thing. You'll go back in the game, see a third and 13 where he'll rush eight guys at the quarterback and drop three. So. Yeah, they both have 11 guys. They're both going to play a major diet of the Tampa cover two defense. But again, their creativity as the game wears on, how they're going to attack each other's personnel. Nate, this is your fifth season with this defense, uh, this Tampa two. How difficult is it to pick up and are you still learning things even now? I'm still learning things, uh, e even right now. I think it's a fun defense to play. We have an opportunity to, to look back at the quarterback and, and make plays on the ball. And then we're still bringing a whole lot of pressure. I mean, even myself, Charles Tillman, we get a chance to blitz uh, sometimes. So it's, it's all about making plays within the scheme of the defense and uh, just trying to dominate. And you talk about Kiffin making a game plan to uh, 
to stifle the Bears. And certainly he's going to look at the tape of the last two weeks. It's been Matt Forte. So they're going to put eight, maybe nine in the box and force Kyle to beat them through the air, right? Right. I, I think there's a lot of similarities between the two quarterbacks and their athleticism. Is Kyle a great athlete? No. But he knows how to distribute the football, a similar to Brian. So I think Monty Kiffin, his biggest challenge is to make Brian Greasy speed up his thinking process, not only at the line of scrimmage, but as soon as he takes that center quarterback exchange and drops back, he's going to see different configurations of bodies moving all over. And that's that's been their M.O. And, and whether it's John Gruden inserting his his you know value on offense Monty Kiffin is a leader of this defense and he will make use of, of the athletes he has yeah Monty Kiffin's the only guy one of the only guys that stayed from the Tony Dungy regime through John Gruden you realize how valued he is to that franchise all right give me a key each both you guys give me a key to beating Tampa Bay this week and starting with you Nate I think it'll be outplaying the other team's defense I think we can continue to do that pick up third downs and be able to run the ball on these guys uh, we should be successful back at home, so uh, we're, we're looking forward to this week. Tom, your key? You know, I think it's always Matt Forte having a big day, but when Matt Forte or, and Jason McKee, those guys have to be in position to make sure they block the proper personnel on an overwhelming blitz. If they pick up their, blo their, pick up their blocks, right there, Monty Kiffin's going to understand that these two backs are, can hold up their responsibilities. But the key is going to be the first time they try to throw some unconventional blitz at you, make sure you have everybody accounted for. Then it's going to take that kind of a luxury away from them and make them play more you know, consistent style of defense. Time for another break here on Countdown to Kickoff presented by IPA. Just like last week, the Bears will battle some former teammates this Sunday. Is it easy to put personal friendships aside when you step on the gridiron? We'll ask the interceptor. And we'll have our email question of the show. It involves that fourth and one on the Bears' final drive in Carolina. Join the post-game party on Comcast Sportsnet as I break down every Bears game with former Bears Dan Jiggets, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller. We'll bring you the Bears press conferences after every game. And William Jackson is live outside the Bears locker room with player reaction. Plus, Jerry Azuma gives out his coveted Jerry's GQ Award to the best-dressed bear. Trust me, you don't want to miss U.S. Cellular Bears post-game live after every game. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friends. Where is a fan's best friend online? ComcastSportsNet.com. It's the place to read analysis from Comcast Sportsnet experts that you can't find anywhere else. Get up to the second news headlines, see the day's programming lineup, check out talent bios, and watch video clips featuring the latest info on your teams. Plus, sign up for Sports Extra and Sports Blast email alerts that make you the first to know about breaking news. Log on right now to ComcastSportsNet.com. Fans' best friend online. Six, five, four. Michael Strip got it back. Three. Now oh, here's Savard. He races over the line. Left it for Larmer. Back to Savard. Two. Michael falls. Fires. Yeah! Savard moves right in. He scores! Savard! He's done quite a bit for me. Uh, we're good friends, obviously, and and uh, I look up to him. So he's uh, he's been a big part of my uh, career the last couple of years. Well, Orton certainly bonded with Greasy the last two years. We see it almost every week, facing old teammates, and we'll see it again this week. It brings us to Vasher's view. Is it all right to hang out with a former teammate before the game? Well, you did. You hung out with, what, Chris Harris the night before? You guys had dinner. Yeah, I did. We had a chance to hang out for a little bit and be able to catch up. He's doing a great job out there in, in Charlotte, and I'm still here in Chicago, and he just wants to catch up a little bit. But it's all business, always business. As long as you play the same position, it's okay to hang <laughs> now, out. Now, let me ask you, with the 85, with 85 Bears and, and throughout your career, would you be friendly with guys, or is that something new that we've seen in the game? Well, you know, my brother-in-law played, John Scully played for the Atlanta Falcons for 11 years at the same time when I was playing. And when we played Atlanta, I was always, you know, nervous for him, but I, I was still a Bears fan. So, um, yeah, you know, there's always a little uncomfortable feeling that goes along with it. All right, every week we dive into our email bag and let you 
ask your burning bears question to these two guys. Derek from Homewood logged on to ComcastSportsNet.com, and he writes this week, I thought Ron Turner called a good game for the most part, but why did the Bears have third and one during a crucial time and Matt Forte didn't get the ball on that play or the play after? Tom, your thoughts on that? Well, first of all, Kyle should have completed the pass on second and one. Let's get that out in the open. But the third and one, there was an option to it. It was a run pass option, and Kyle felt that the pass was a better option than the run. And the thing that I was concerned about, when they went fourth and one, they had single back Jason McKee. The farthest guy away from the quarterback was rookie fifth-round draft choice Kellen Davis at the tight end position, who holds one of the most important blocks in order for that play to be successful. When Kellen Davis got beat across his face, penetration in the backfield, it wasn't allowed to, you know, be completed for the first down. So I think everybody, not only Ron Turner, everybody had a hand in that last series being unsuccessful, and I thought that was the real key. If you have a question for Nate and Tom throughout the season, log on to ComcastSportsNet.com. Go to the Bears page, click the countdown to kickoff icon, and that's where you can submit your question. It's just that simple. Coming up next on the Hurry Up, the home opener on Sunday. Find out what's the craziest thing Nate and Tom have seen a Bears fan do over the years. That's next. This is Countdown to Kickoff. All season long, don't miss College Football Mania on Comcast Sportsnet as we bring you the top games from college football's most elite conferences. From the Pac-10, you'll see key matchups featuring high-ranked USC, Arizona State, and Oregon, and the always solid Big 12 conferences on display with Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas, paving their trail to a shot at a national title. Plus, Comcast Sportsnet brings you all the excitement of NIU football. It's College Football Mania all season long, only on Comcast Sportsnet, fans' best friend. You never know who's going to drop by Chicago Tribune Live. Jonathan Taves. It was incredible to spend the whole year in Chicago, um, especially you know watching the progress that our team made. Tommy Harris. I never thought about injury until I got hurt. Right. And I, I, you know, you really respect it afterwards. Tom Arnold. If you hate a Cup fan, you're a bad person <laughs> because it's been a hundred years. And weekly visits from Nick Swisher. See, I've got the CSN facing y'all too. I got this thing locked in. Chicago Tribune Live weeknights at 5:30 on Comcast Sportsnet. Join the post-game party on Comcast Sportsnet as I break down every Bears game with former Bears Dan Jiggins, Jerry Azuma, and Jim Miller. We'll bring you the Bears press conferences after every game. And William Jackson is live outside the Bears locker room with player reaction. Plus, Jerry Azuma gives out his coveted Jerry's GQ Award to the best-dressed bear. Trust me, you don't want to miss U.S. Cellular Bears post-game live after every game. Only on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans best friends. This league's in UPS. <laughs> no, this one's this one right here is from Jake Delhomme. Jake Delhomme. It's pretty thick too. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm sending this one back to him. <laughs> Return to sender. Perfect segue, Lance. Time for the hurry-up presented by IPA. Briggs will not be fined by the NFL for his hit on Jake DeLone, but was that a clean play, Tom? Yep, too close to the first down marker to quit. Nate, do I dare ask, was it clean? Definitely clean. Of course it was. Home opener at Soldier Field on Sunday. Fans are going to be pumped up. What's the craziest thing you've seen a Bears fan do over the years, Nate? Uh, one of the fans ran onto the field. Uh, I think it was Green Bay, so he got tackled by the police. Pretty good. He got credit for, for a nice tackle, too. What, your craziest thing hey, you've you know, seen? There's, there's a Bears fan out there that has you come and sign his back, and then he goes immediately to the tattoo artist and gets your name tattooed onto his body. He's got it all over. Nice, nice. John Gruden, a.k.a. Chucky, known to be a little intense. What's the most intense coach you've played for, Nate? Uh, my coach in college, Mac Brown. He was pretty intense. I do. I, I know exactly who you're the most. It attacked. wasn't Jerry Faust in college. It was Mike Dixon <laughs> with the Bears. There you go. All right. Chris Cooley, he got into some trouble with a revealing picture on his website this week. Do you guys like to interact with fans via the Internet, Tom? I'm not that interesting. No, I don't interact. Do you have a computer? No. Seriously. Seriously. All right. Just pick up the phone and call. <laughs> All right. What about you? You and fans on the internet. Would you, say, would you like to converse that way? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll always get a chance to talk to the fans. So anytime I get a chance to, to see them, talk to them, tell me what you think. Now, do, you don't have a website yet? No website. Is it coming? It's coming. All right. Make sure you reveal it on your own TV show. <laughs> Bucks used to wear those ugly orange cream sickle uniforms. Who now has the ugliest uniforms? The National Football League, Nate? I would have to say the Packers. 
There you go. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the Jets. I like the old Jets uniforms, but, you know. It's shocking that you guys <laughs> don't like those, those two teams. What pregame superstitions do you have? Nate, let's start with you. I would have to say just listening to my iPod and in, in my locker and just getting quiet and just hanging out. What what song? Any any song particular that, that you have to listen to before the game? Uh, not really. No. I, I kind of put it on shuffle and just let it go. All right. Superstitions, Todd? Get there early. I was always the first one in the locker room and still am. All right. <laughs> and get out on time, as we are going to do right now. Good luck against the Buccaneers Sunday. Look forward to your broadcast with Jeff Thank on you. WBBM Radio on Sunday. That's going to do it for this edition of Countdown to Kickoff, presented by IPA. For the Interceptor, Nate Basher and Tom Thayer, I am Pat Boyle. Go Bears, and we'll see you next week. Where do you get your Chicago sports news? Level 1, local nightly news. You only get a few minutes. Level 2 National Sports Network. You might not see Chicago teams. Top level. Sports Night on Comcast Sportsnet. Extended highlights, breaking news, in-depth interviews, and news from Chicago sports fans like you. Sports Night. Elevate your Chicago sports coverage. Every night on Comcast Sportsnet. Fans' best friend. We watch the game from our couches at home. Chicago sports fans are the breed of their own. We're there for the first game with there at the end. Comcast Sportsnet is a fan's best friend. With more Cubs and White Sox games than anyone else, and every one of them in high definition, Comcast Sportsnet is the best choice for Chicago baseball this summer. Comcast Sportsnet is a fan's best friend. Watching the home of the Bulls, Blackhawks, Cubs, and White Sox, Comcast Sportsnet. Hello and welcome to week three of Fantasy Fix. I'm your host, John Borg, joined as always by the one John on this show that truly matters. He is John Hanson from FantasyGuru.com and from Sirius Satellite Radio. And joining us once again from the Sportsnet New York newsroom and a loyal customer of Mitchell and Ness, he is Scott Farrell. We'll hear from Scott a little later in the show. Or not if he keeps that up. All right. If it's not broke, don't fix it unless it's your fantasy football team. And that's why we have the Fixer Upper segment players that John Hanson believes will come up big in week three. And we start with the quarterbacks. And how about Donovan McNabb going up against a Steelers defense that allowed just 155 passing yards to the Browns last week? Well, I think the one thing that we learned about McNabb, I was a little worried about him last week against a good Dallas defense. A, we learned that Dallas' secondary isn't very good. And B, we learned that McNabb is back officially now. He moving, he's moving very, very well. He can get it done no matter who they have at receiver. Uh, against Pittsburgh, it's not an easy matchup on the surface, but if you can protect against their blitz packages, you can throw on this defense. Reggie Brown may be back, and really, at the end of the day, throwing the football, this is what they do in Philly. Westbrook probably not going to go off on the ground, so I think McNabb will be just fine. Eli Manning gets another great matchup this week uh, against Cincinnati. They are reeling big time. Burris is feeling it. Not thrown to the tight end quite as much, but Amani Toomer is really taking on that role. Kevin Boss doesn't have a lot of catches, but Manning's going to be fine this week. All right, our, our second half, John Kitna, he seems to constantly spring up on this list. And uh, the pubs at JTO Sullivan's open for business once again. Yeah, uh, Kitna, again, it's, it's all garbage time production. And no one goes down 21 nothing like the Detroit Lions and Calvin Johnson yeah. is just a beast. Yeah. He may be the best receiver in football talent-wise already, which is saying something, only about 17 games in his career. The loam against the Vikings, probably going to have to throw a, a little bit more than usual against the run defense. Steve Smith is back. J.T. O'Sullivan understands Mike Martz's offense, and a good sign, Isaac Bruce came on last week. It is the Lions. I think he's going to be fine, and Phillip Rivers is really feeling it right now. LT dealing with that toe injury. Rivers has to key this offense and he's getting the job done throwing specifically to Chris Chambers who's been money so far. Now I'll tell you how good Calvin Johnson is going to be this week a little later on in the show. All right, we move to the running backs and Chris Johnson, well he's not ready to change his name to Dos Ocho just yet, number 28, but 
you know, you have to like his chances against the Houston Texans this week. I love Chris Johnson. I mean, he was one of my sleeper running backs here on the preseason show, and I'm actually shocked at how well he's playing and how much he's playing. He really is like a Brian Westbrook in that he's got great speed, yet he'll take it downhill. It's not like a Reggie Bush is always running to the sideline. He goes north-south, and then he uses that great speed. I know Maurice Jones-Drew has been problematic so far. He got robbed of a touchdown week one, by the way. He's a little banged up, too. But he runs very well on Indy. No Bob Sanders. They're a little depleted up front. I'm calling for a big game from Maurice Jones-Drew. And the Jones boys I like as well this week. All right, five through eight and a few head scratchers on this list. Uh, Selvin Young, that running back by committee in Denver, and, and Sammy Morris after uh, his goose egg. I last know, week. Yeah, I know it's a committee in Denver. But look, one thing that's lost on all the talk about the committee is Selvin Young looks great. I mean, the kid can play. And he's got great speed. He's laterally explosive. He can do good things in the passing game. A very good matchup against the Saints. I think this is the week that Selvin Young steps through the forefront and commands more touches, consistently touches. And oh, by the way, Denver's offense one of the most potent ones in the league right now. Sammy Mars, I know he was terrible last week, but against Miami, they're going to feed him the rock. He's going to get over 10 carries, goal line carries, a good bet to score a touchdown. Willis McGahee. Look, he's had two weeks to prepare for this one against Cleveland, so I, I think you give him a try if you need him. All right. Wideouts are next. The Eagles were lit up for 41 points last week against Dallas. You have to think that Heinz Ward, his eye is going to be lighting up. Yeah, the Eagles have some issues at safety, and, and I think Pittsburgh is going to attack that with a guy like Heinz Ward who can make some big plays down the seam. I mentioned Chris Chambers. Antonio Gates not really looking like the Gates that we know. Uh, he's got the foot injury, so that's a concern. Uh, Santana Moss I like as well. He's on a mini roll here in Arizona secondary. One thing they do is give up big plays. And I tried Roddy White this week. Uh, very good matchup. And Matt Ryan, he, he's still a work in progress, but I think he's going to make a play to Roddy White this week. All right. Our second half, Isaac Bruce, the reemergence of Ike there in San Francisco. And, hey, with uh, Colston out in New Orleans, David Patton could be the guy. Yeah, these are all lower-end guys. You know, usually you, you'll plug these guys in as your number three, but they all have good matchups. Bruce against the Lions, he was all over the field last week, catching intermediate throws, running downfield, getting the love in the red zone. So, feeling pretty good about Ozzie Bruce right now. David Patton gets a lot of looks. Here's the thing about this game against Denver. Denver's going to kill them offensively. They're going to put up four touchdowns. So, Breeze is going to throw it probably 45 times in this game. Justin Gage, we had him here last week, I believe, said good things about him. It's all about Kerry Collins being able to actually throw the football, unlike a Vince Young. So, Gage definitely has value and Eddie Royal how can you not love this kid against the Saints their secondary is depleted interestingly enough he scored the game winning touchdown last week and then the game winning two point conversion both exactly the same, same place play. yeah, so that was, shows you the confidence they have yeah in the and he was double covered all right so if you have Denver Broncos in fact if you have the whole team start them all and yes. that includes the tight end oh Tony Scheffler is one of my favorites uh, I had him on my serious show a couple of times a great kid humble name guy dropping. name dropping all the way uh, very athletic uh, very very good matchup this week against the Orleans and we saw Chris Cooley do well against this defense. Dallas Clark has had some good games against Jacksonville. Looks like he's going to play. Uh, Vernon Davis, one thing I like about Vernon Davis this week, probably not going to be asked to block as much. That's the thing about Vernon Davis. He's a good blocker. So when they face a good defense, you may want to sit him, but the Detroit Lions are not a good defense. All right, and Fantasy Fix scoring its first a Royal Flush on this show. We had Eddie Royal, and now we've got Robert Royal of yeah. the Buffalo Bills. Robert Royal is a red zone guy for Trent Edwards. And by the way, Trent Edwards, mm. you want to talk about solid. I mean, this guy's already a pro, and the Buffalo Bills are a very, very good team. Royal could get some love in the red zone. I'm going to throw Todd Heap out there as well against Cleveland. They have issues at safety. Uh, Todd Heap has done absolutely nothing, but he could do something. And John Carlson. You know, in a point per reception league, like, this guy's been absolute money. Uh, they don't really have any receivers in Seattle. They signed a couple of guys, Corin Robinson, but Carlson's really stepping up big time. All right, that's our fixer uppers. With that, though, there's still a couple of guys that our experts would like to be fixed up with, and that, the ever popular Man Crush segment, will start with Scott. He's been warming up the pipes. And Scott, uh, who do you like to pick up, uh, put up some big numbers in week three? Guys, I think it's all about plaques. I think the Bengals are putrid. They're pathetic. I think their coach is going to get whacked. I think he's asking to get whacked, talking about guarantees of wins. And Burris just has been lighting it up. 
since last year at the end of the season, through the playoffs, Super Bowl, new deal, ankles fine. He's going to light up the Bengals. They're an awful football team. And don't believe anything else about Cincinnati. They are that bad. All right, with you, John, it's double A R O N. Yeah, I'm just really, really liking Aaron Rodgers right now. And I think against Dallas, the key about this defense is if you can block their two excellent pass rushers, Ware and Ellis, you can throw the ball on this defense as Philly did on Monday night. And the Packers just so happen to have an excellent tackle tandem. So I think Rodgers is going to get protection. And when he does, man, that kid can sling the ball and he can get the ball to their excellent receivers. All right, well, we always welcome your emails. You can get to us at CSN Fantasy Fix at Comcast.net. With that, let's dig down deep and see what we pull out. We're going to start with T-Mac. T-Mac wants to know, should I start Matt Hasselbeck against the Rams or Matt Schaub against the Titans in Tennessee? Oh, man, that's a tough call because the Texans have a brutal matchup against Tennessee, one of the most aggressive and physical front sevens in football. But I still roll with Matt Schaub because he has Andre Johnson, who gives their corner some problems. They're not very big and physical in Tennessee. So I think Andre Johnson is going to get a lot of garbage time production, and they're going to throw a lot. All right, Scott, Jim uh, up in Dunder Mifflin wants to know, uh, should I start Torrey Holt this week over David Patton? I wouldn't. I think they're horrible as well. I'm talking about all these bad teams. That Torrey Holt thing's old news. I mean, he can't even throw the ball, this quarterback. He's got about 1.5 seconds to release the ball. He was so mad last week at his offensive line. He was cussing and calling them names in the huddle. They're pathetic. Go the other way with Patton. All right, uh, back to you, John. Pretty easy. Bobby and Philly, Tony Scheffler, Antonio Gates. Well, that's a, that's a, you know what? It, the play to win pick is Scheffler. He really is. Gates is not moving around very well. If you want to play it safe, I would go with Gates. But if you felt like this is about expectations, you know, sometimes you need to make your roster decisions based on your expectations. If, you, if you're looking at the other team, you're like, man, I really got to score as many points as I, I possibly can, then roll with Scheffler. All right, Scott, the trade offers are coming in. DACA wants to know, I've been offered LaDainian Tomlinson for Marion Barber and Reggie Wayne. Should I pull the trigger? Look, every guy I've ever seen that had toe jam and problems with that injury, it haunts them. It never goes away. It lingers for the rest of your life. Ask Jack Lambert. Now, I know that LT is incredible and all the rest, and he's going to have his good games from October on. But I'll take Marion Barber and Reggie Wayne. I think Peyton Manning's going to get unglued from October forward. He's going to hit Wayne left and right. They're going to manipulate him as much as possible. And Marion Barber's a horse. I do the deal. I'm done with all this visor boy and his toe jam in San Diego. Do the deal. Shake hand. Ooh. <laughs> Not quite sure. LT is a slow starter. He tend, has a tendency to pick things up, but still, it, it seems to be a balanced trade in there. All right, we're going to answer a few emails a little bit later on the show, so keep them coming. When we come back, though, we'll toss around some of the hot topics in fantasy circles. There's a new marshal in town, and he let his fa fantasy presence be known last week and why Deshaun Jackson should petition the NFL for a 99-yard playing field as we take a break some of the Week 3 NFL matchups. Are you looking to improve the efficiency and productivity of your small business? International Profit Associates is the nation's leader in management consulting for small and medium-sized companies. We can provide a comprehensive evaluation of your business and offer a wide variety of professional services to fit your needs. Our business analysts will assess your company's strengths and weaknesses. From operations to tech services, IPA is full service and can help take your business to the next level. Call IPA today to take the first step toward growing your business. Haven't ordered dinner yet? Then try Giordano's, Chicago's famous stuffed pizza. We made it good. You made it famous. Hey, Lisa, what do you think? What is that? It's my new PWC. And the awesome protection plan I got for it. There's an easier way to protect your PWC. Call Geico. They help insure all types of vehicles. Geico Power Sports. Insurance for your car and the other stuff that moves you. Bob Rorman equals savings squared.
Deep discounts, low APR financing. Bob Rorman's Oakbrook Toyota in Westmont. Save from $500 to $10,000 now. Get 3.9 APR for 60 months on the 31 miles per gallon Camry. More than 70 available. Bob Rorman. You owe it to yourself. Bob Rorman's Oakbrook Toyota in Westmont. Five minutes west of the Tri-State on Ogden Avenue. Well, there's only one way we can answer your questions here at Fantasy Fix. You've got to send it to this address, csnfantasyfix at comcast.net. With that, we're talking issues entering week three. First topic, Brandon Marshall caught 18 balls last week in that game against the Chargers. He predicted 140 for the season. I don't know how realistic it was, but if he has 18, it's very realistic. If he keeps himself out of trouble, it is actually very realistic. Marshall saw a lot of zone coverage last week. They were giving up the short stuff, a lot of three-step drops from Jay Cutler. And Marshall is a man among boys. He cannot be stopped. So I think 140 is actually realistic. All right, Scott, uh, here in Philadelphia, despite that Monday night loss, rookie Deshaun Jackson put up another 100-yard game. I'm sure there were owners out there cursing him after he uh, dropped the ball on the one-yard line. But uh, Reggie Brown is now working his way back from a hamstring injury. Is Brown going to start cutting some time into De 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 Deshaun Jackson's uh, playing time? I don't think so. I think they can use every body that they can throw out there. Donovan McNabb, second in the league. He's been impressive. He's looking as quick as ever. He's lost some weight. I think Deshaun Jackson gives him a lot of speed and spacing. He's just as hard to guard as Marshall as far as I'm concerned. He's put up huge numbers, over 216 yards, an 18-yard average. He's had a long of 60. He made the mistake. Andy Reid's not going to forget about it. But if I'm in Pharrell at Elfie, I'm drinking cold brews on this guy's name because he's getting the job done big time for the Eagles. All right, Scott, we're going to keep it with you. Two weeks are behind us. All right, you may be 0-2. I've got a team that's 0-2. I don't know if you've got your fingers on the panic button, but I've got guys like LaDainian Tomlinson. I'm sure people have Carson Palmer, Larry Johnson. Uh, of some of those names and maybe some other ones, who are guys that you're going to start probably thinking about replacing in your starting lineup? I want to put Sproles in there. At least he produces. I mean, with all the commercials and money and endorsements and his toe jam, I've had enough LT. And Larry Johnson has got to quit being such a femme. When has this guy not complained in his career? I don't know who's worse, LJ or Chad, whatever his name is. I'm sick of guys that complain all day. I just want to hit him in the head with a sledgehammer. I got to tell you, if I drafted anybody on a team with a nickname, a mammal nickname, <laughs> I'm worried. You know, the Bengals, uh, the Rams, the Dolphins. One team I'm really worried about, though, John, is the Browns because I felt that this was a, an offense that was good enough to produce against anyone. And they are good enough, but everything's gone wrong. Uh, Derek Anderson is not looking comfortable last week. Braylon Edwards is really coming up small. Stallworth, small as usual. He's a renta player. He'll be on his fifth team next, next year. So it's, it needs to get turned around quickly in Cleveland because there is production to be had here. All right, well, our experts have also been taking a look at fantasy football's version of the Dollar Tree. We call it the scrap heap, players who can be snatched up on the cheap. And, Scott, you lead off. J.T. O'Sullivan racked up the huge game against the Seahawks on the road, no less. I thought it was impressive. Way over 300 yards and just producing big time. Why not go out and gunsling and whip it up? Like I said, Sproles, a buck and a quarter, no name, nobody cares about you, but he just does his job. I love the way he plays. And Dante Rosario, with Muhammad getting more space and with Steve Smith back, they're going to ignore Rosario, throw him the rock underneath, and you'll get a lot of productivity. And I talked about a lot of the guys on my list already, but I'll talk about Michael Bush. Justin Fargus is already hurt. And I know Darren McFadden went off last year. He had a huge hole last week, he had huge holes to run through. That's not going to happen every week. It's a power running game, and Michael Bush will get, he's a lock to get 10 carries a game if Fargus is out of the mix, plus those precious goal line carries. So he's the pickup of the week for me. All right, plenty of room, though, on the fantasy fixed bench. Who starts and who rides pine as we look at some of the week three matchups? And we're going to start Oakland, Buffalo at Orchard Park. And, uh, John, who do you start? Who do you sit? Well, I love Marshawn Lynch. I mean, how can you not? I interviewed him for my magazine cover this year. He's my boy. He's coming through big time. Darren McFadden here, this is a great test. If he does well this week, I will eat some crow. 
but I don't think the Bill defense will give up those huge gaping holes for McFadden. I think he comes up small this week. Who's not on your radio show? That's what I want to know. All right, Bengals and Giants and Scott, what do you got for us? The guru's on my radio show every week, and he's a rock star. But I'll tell you, any of the earth, wind, and fire, you remember some of that groove and get some of that feel going, some of this, like a little bit of this? But I'm going with Brandon Jacobs. He is a freight train. He's a horse. He loves pain. Bring it on. And if I'm going to sit, it's anyone that has anything to do with Marvin Lewis's Bengals. Carson Palmer, nice quarterback rating of 37. My sister has a higher rating. And uh, the Bengals are averaging 184 yards a game. That's real impressive. If I'm Mike Brown, I fire everybody. I'm surprised he's actually rated his sister, though. And he has one up to you on the name dropping list. All right, Panthers, Vikings. Well, I like Jake DeLome, definitely. Uh, and Jonathan Stewart, you know, I, I would start him if I needed him because, look, the transition's already begun. He's going to be the guy. I just don't like him in something of a timeshare still against the Vikings. It's going to be hard for him to score. All right, Scott, back to you. And you get the big one, uh, the Battle of Pennsylvania, Steelers and Eagles. I love the Steelers going into Pharrell. They're going to be battling the Keystone State. Start Heinz Ward. He's going to get off. Roethlisberger's going to find him. This is going to be a war in the trenches. Sit Deshaun Jackson this week, however. I know I love him, but the D-backs of the Steelers are going to be in his face all day. They're going to be smacking heads and throwing elbows. I love pain. Hey, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it, bring it. You have to knock him in the head. His, all, eye, his all, eyes are a little crossed. All now. week I'm walking around my house talking like Pharrell. I, I can't, I can't <laughs> I ask him. Thought about Aaron Rodgers this week. But anyway, Aaron Rodgers, I definitely like him. And Ryan Grant, do not like him at all. He needs to show me something first. Well, and he's hurt. Uh, to top all that off is the Cowboys Packers, another of the premier games of week three. All right, Studs, Duds, and Sleepers is next. As we head to break, check out more of the week three matchups in the NFL. What factors should you consider when buying a luxury vehicle? Should you put MPG on top? What about resale or reliability? The truth is, when you fit all seven costs together, you'll see why the Lexus RX has the lowest cost of ownership in its class. See how your costs align at your Lexus dealer. Lease the 2009 RX 350 all-wheel drive for $449 a month for 36 months with $36.49 due at signing. I'm going lovables. You know, I love a good nacho plate as much as the next guy. I'm about to take the lovables, man. Tune in this fall to an all-new season of ATV Illustrated TV, and here is what you'll see. And you can win the products you see in the great ATV Illustrated TV giveaway. Just log on to ATVIllustrated.com and click on the contest icon, then enter to win. Prizes include a Matrax Lightfoot ATV track system, an Ultimate Racks carrying system, Snow Sport All-Terrain Snow Plows, and Colpin Power Sports products. Register for your chance to win now and watch the best in ATVing each weekend, only on ATV Illustrated TV. Six, five. Four. Michael Strip got it back. Three. Now oh, here's Savard. He races over the line. Left it for Larmer. Back to Savard. Two. Michael falls. Fires. Yeah! Savard moves right in. He scores! Savard! back in session and so are high school sports on comcast sportsnet you won't need supplies with coverage like this as high school lights brings you previews the staggering numbers are hard to believe interviews it's been great i think i get more out of it than they do though and the latest scores in the chicagoland area get ready windy city to be blown away by the best high school sports program in chicago high school lights presented by farmers insurance every friday night at 10 30 on comcast sportsnet fans best friend
Welcome back to the show. In Vegas, they've got five card stud. Here on the fix, it's five player stud. It's Scott Farrell's Farrell's five. And who do you got that's going to light it up in week three, Scott? I mean, this is easy money this week. Kurt Warner because of two things, Bolden and Fitzgerald. It's just a party in the air. It's like an assault. They're throwing it all over the place. I mean, don't even leave the room for popcorn. Isaac Bruce, watch J.T. O'Sullivan go off on the Lions. Detroit stinks again, but everybody's bored hearing about, are they ever going to fire Matt Millen? No, they're never going to fire him. He's like best friends with the Ford family. Don't even get in his way. Michael Bush, 16 carries last week, 90 yards. He's going to be getting the load again. Just like the guru was saying, this guy's sneaky like this. 